What's up, guys? Welcome to, uh, what is this, the January live yep. show. You guys probably know who this guy is. Hello, Rico's everyone. Rico's here. Um, we are early, as per usual, and I'm going to take the, this moment to uh, just make sure that all the audio is correct and whether Facebook is up and running, all that good stuff. So also, it takes a second or two for um, the stream to kind of behave, because like right now we're getting like yellow stream health on on the YouTubes. So we'll pop out this chat so we can see this mm -hmm. a little bit better. Top chat, I'm gonna turn live. to live chat. Mm -hmm. So hi guys. I see Dave Davis and Texan Boy, some, some early viewership. So yeah, if you guys in chat could let me know, uh, how do I sound? Can you hear this guy? Hello, hello everyone. And I'm pulling up Facebook on another computer here. For you guys that, that use Facebook all the time, I don't know how you guys do it. I just don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> it looks so wacky to me. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if it's running. Hold on, let me, let me hit, hit hit the refresh because sometimes that does something for you for Facebook. Okay, cool. Thanks, Dave. He says it sounds fine. Yeah. So I, apparently, um, the the Facebook one isn't even running yeah question mark <laughs> whatever so anyhow hopefully you guys are all doing well uh, on Instagram earlier today we did a, a quick little live thing that, that we just kind of did a, a walkthrough of the of the new building and just kind of went over a, a couple details it took a long time for me to put together this live program so uh, I was running into all kinds of, of issues, trying to like get it to compile and everything like that. So that pretty much takes it takes this computer all up, and I, I'm not able to then edit or do anything really with any other videos. So I got a lot of it done already, but I think that right around like midweek, I'll be able to publish an actual YouTube update video on this new building. Um, but yeah, for the face for the for the Instagram live crowd, we did a quick walkthrough, and so hopefully uh, you might have you might have uh, caught onto that. Oh, so uh, Bahama Llama Coral new building looks awesome. Saw it on Insta. There you go. So one person saw it. Tech your talk. What's up? Glad you could make it. Yeah. So I am just taking a look here at my view. It says there's 11 people watching. I don't believe that. Um, sometimes uh, YouTube sends out notifications like really late. Yeah, that could be. That could be. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. It's just like a, a slow adoption period. <laughs> so this guy says that uh, he likes your, your tank oh, progress. Thank you. It's uh, definitely been, uh, been fun. <laughs> It's it's so much work to put together a new aquarium. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I don't especially large aquariums. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people out there have big aquariums, <laughs> yeah. but going from a 55 gallon tank or a 100 gallon oh. tank to a really big tank like 500, 700, yeah. thousand gallon tank, uh, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Tech your talk. No, FYI, sorry, no, no notifications. notifications. They, yeah, YouTube does. What that a shock! Yeah, YouTube doing me dirty. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dave. Dave Davis with the five dollars super chat. Just because I appreciate all you do. Oh, I, that's awesome. It's trust me. Right now, every little bit helps so much. Um, I mean, you can. You guys can probably. Imagine the costs, the costs associated with doing some like a big project <laughs> like this. And two please is in here. What's up? Good hey, to see hello. you too. 
Two Police has been going crazy on my Patreon. Like he just like is yeah. all over oh, all yeah. of my Patreon posts. So quick thank you to him. Yeah. So we like I said, we're early. The uh, the actual live show will start here at two p.m. So what's up? What is up? Anything going on with you guys in chat here? I wonder, does anybody have a new build that they got going on? Yeah, because this is the time that the mm -hmm. hobby really picks up. Because usually summertime is when people start winding down the hobby. Going on jet skis. And mm -hmm. <laughs> they, you know, mowing their grass. <laughs> mowing their grass, yeah. But yeah, wintertime... Wintertime is when this hobby gets a lot more busy, but I was just like remarking the other day that I mean, wintertime hasn't really come here yet. So no. we were looking at like 60 degree weather. Like a couple days yeah. ago. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we went from 60 down to like 30 yeah. and snowy. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh, great, you know, finally winter is here. And then it kind of just fizzled out again. Mm -hmm. It's chilly, but it's not, it's yeah. not winter, you know? They, it's, I, this is the first uh, time this year we actually had snow stick around on the ground. Yeah, and it's gone now. Yeah. Basically Much, gone. Yeah. And two please with $1.99, yep. You, you, know, you know it's a, it's a live sale, or you know when it's a live show of any kind, when two please is in here dropping $1.99 <laughs> super chats on people. <laughs> right. Thank you, man. Yeah, so what is going on here? So for the folks that missed um, the, the Instagram Live thing that we did earlier today, uh, as far as like this new building is concerned, um, the real big thing that happened was we were able to put the, the ceiling on the first floor in place because we were waiting on so many like other contractors to get done in that ceiling space. So HVAC has to get in there, electrical has to get in there, plumbing has to get in there. And when they're finally done with all of that, then we're able to insulate and seal it up and paint it. Mm. And so we we did get that done. And this place is looking more and more and more polished, finally. So uh, one thing that is kind of interesting when I, when I show some friends, is like there's kind of like two different types of people. I've noticed that there's, there's the one type of person that uh, can practically see into the future and oh, there we go with Facebook. Yeah, yeah the Facebook is going to come online exactly, and then and then you guys are all probably going to get this notification at two p.m. Eastern. But um, yeah, there's so there's like I said, there's two types of people. One type can can really picture how everything is going to go, and and sometimes those people can tell just as soon as like the ground is broken, like as soon as there's dirt, not yeah. rather than grass. They're like, oh, I can see it all already. And then there's other people where it's basically a finished building and they're like, no, nah, I can't tell because there's no aquariums and there's <laughs> right. no aquariums with corals and fish. It's like until that's there, mm -hmm. all of this doesn't matter. So there's definitely, I can tell, just like, uh, yeah, just the, the expectations. Because I mean, I, I've, I've walked some of my friends through here and it is it literally takes no more than three minutes <laughs> for some of them. They're like, great, let's go inside now. Mm -hmm. And by inside it means not this building. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting. So hopefully you guys can can appreciate the the building updates that that we do. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I can understand. It's hard to um it's hard to, I guess, get a feel for, for what stuff is going to look like when it's months and months and well, months away. Well, people did that with me. So when I started the build and once the um, tank was out and stuff like that, you know, just to keep making videos and document, okay, I got to paint the walls, I got to redo the floor. Some people were excited and some were like, okay, when's the tank coming? Mm. When, they, they, they didn't it's care tank, about it's that. Tank, they, it's tank. Yeah, exactly. Because nobody nobody wants to talk about electrical. No, they don't want to talk about anything. <laughs> nobody wants to talk about how do you get it's like how do we do um, like just random like basic plumbing to, to make this go from point. Nobody cares. They want to see the the, the pretty stuff. They want to see. Yep. It. But it's a good thing that you're documenting um, because I think just as like uh, 
when, when it comes to like making video, mm -hmm. I, I've heard from, from other channels and stuff, it's like, don't curate, document. Right. So like I'm definitely doing the curating thing. Mm -hmm. He's definitely doing like the documenting thing. And there, I think there is something to um, like a constant like update thing so you kind of can just grow along with it mm -hmm. rather than all of a sudden it's like boom, we hit all these big huge milestones. And I guess that's kind of what like my updates are kind of looking like. <laughs> Krill myself, yeah. kind of excited for the first live set. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. So this month we're only going to be doing one live show. Um, partly because I'm going to be gone for a week starting the 20th. So that takes up two weekends right there that I won't be around. Uh, so usually what we're going to be doing is, um, is at least two live shows a month. I want to, I want to do like an SP. So the original, original <laughs> plan was to do a smaller SPS live show. Oh, by the way, Welcome to everybody that actually got notifications and whatnot and, and the Facebook uh, live crowd that, that might have just gotten started here. I have a feeling that a lot of the notifications didn't like pop up as soon as I went live. So we've been on for about like 10 minutes or so. Yeah. Yep, yep. Sinochis so said just got the notification. There you go. There you go, right there. So we can wait just a couple more minutes. Uh, you can say, you know, thank you to the Patreon people that are probably playing that. Got it, <laughs> right there. Um, no, but w but with the with the new building stuff, uh, it's it's good to kind of uh, to see that progression because it's mm -hmm. really easy to to sit back and think, you know what, nothing is really progressing. But then you look back and you're like, oh, yeah, there were exactly. some major obstacles that we had to overcome mm -hmm. to get to this point. So don't take what you have now for granted at all. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, the, the timing is going to work out nicely because the, the aquariums should be available in April for us, and that'll give us plenty of time to do all the, the projects that we wanted to get done with the building structure-wise. And by the time that we actually get the aquariums, everything will be like, no, no ragrets, you know? Mm -hmm. Okie doke. So... Shall we get started? I, I would probably wait a couple more minutes. You want to wait a couple more minutes? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. YouTube is being really shy. Right they'll now. be. YouTube is okay. So I, I have like this this love hate relationship with YouTube, and it shouldn't be a love hate relationship because they're they they've been so instrumental to our our whole business and everything yeah. like that. And it's it's kind of silly to think that oh, there's this free platform out there where you can publicize and promote your business and c conduct direct sales, right? Uh, but I hate them. <laughs> yeah, that that's kind of that's kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, their their algorithm is not that good sometimes at recommending videos, mm -hmm. and they recommend some really toxic drama stuff, and so it, it pushes other less dramatic stuff away. Two please again with the dollar ninety nine. Thank you. So get those thumbs, thumbs up. up. <laughs> We're just wake up. Live show starting, right? All right. So uh, for those that are new to the whole live show thing, uh, the live show itself goes for about 48 to 72 hours, roughly. We usually take it down midweek. So even if you're watching this on a rebroadcast later on, there's still plenty of opportunities to purchase. Um, and if you do want to purchase US only, uh, go to titlegardens.com live. And you're going to see little reminders of that here and there. And the other big question we always get is how much is shipping? It is a flat rate $39.99. Sounds expensive, believe me, it's cheap. Or it's free over $250. Definitely cheap. Um, like lately, the shipping rates are going up for all the major carriers. Mm -hmm. And we've, we haven't changed our shipping price, I don't think, ever. Um, it's it's very expensive now. So if you do have a problem with how much we're charging for shipping, it's fine. Uh, you're more than welcome to send us a shipping label and we will use yours. But you might get some sticker shock, it's expensive to ship. Anyway, $39.99 <laughs> flat rate, free over to 50. Okay, so the other thing I'm gonna mention, I'm gonna switch over to the actual live show now. Um, Hopefully the audio doesn't bug out because sometimes my, my broadcasting software likes to freak out. 
Okay. Can you still hear me? I can still see audio levels, so. Yeah, it looks good. Hopefully, hopefully. All right. There we go, two please, coming through with the linked. Great, thank you. And hello, Victoria Brewer, welcome. I think Victoria had mentioned that uh, that that she and the hubby, I think, are going to be coming to the barbecue. Oh, that would be awesome. Is that it? Hmm. Yeah, uh, Jamie, no notification. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. What's up with that, YouTube? Getting shady? Getting... I, might, I, I almost want to go live real quick to say, hey, we're, we're at Title Gardens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're really. Here. <laughs> see if it works for me. <laughs> yeah, you can if you want. <laughs> Yeah. No, but the uh, that that is really strange about notifications. Like, who knows? Who knows? I said yes, and yes, we are <laughs> going. So, what is that? Your shipping costs are pretty much the best I've seen. We're definitely not the cheapest, but we're also. Um, I think that's pretty much the go. Is that the going rate? We're, I'd it? say we're middle of the road. Okay. But what? So I think that a lot of the smaller. Um, a lot of smaller companies, uh, I think they are probably looking at it from very much like a hobby perspective. Also, they see shipping as a mm -hmm. as like a big hurdle, so they're like, you know what, we're gonna do, we're gonna be like, it's free shipping for orders over a hundred dollars, and everything is a is like a flat rate, thirty dollars, and then they get their first UPS or FedEx bill, and they're <laughs> like, oh yeah. my god, yeah. <laughs> Oh no, flip, no notification. Man, tell your friends then. We, we, we got to grassroots this thing apparently. YouTube. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a, I'm gonna make a YouTube post. Oh, Mike Howard was notified. That's cool. Yeah, like some people get it, but you know what? Since, since you guys are, are on, I'm curious if you guys have hit the notification bell also. Because originally, YouTube, where when you subscribe to somebody, you actually saw everything as far as like that feed goes. Mm. Then they changed it so you don't always see who you're subscribed to even. Mm. Um, it only shows subscriptions for channels that you have visited in the last X number of videos. So if there are videos that, that uh, of channels that you haven't gone back and seen because like I'm subscribed to a bunch of people but I don't regularly go back and view their content and so they stopped showing up in my notifications whatsoever not even notifications but even recommended like on that front page they're just nowhere to be seen and like a year later I'm like oh yeah I was I was subscribed to them I totally forgot wow but then they said okay we're going to implement this notification bell thing right mm -hmm. so that way you guys will get your notifications uh when you, when, when you ask your, your subscribers to hit mm -hmm. that bell also. Jamie said uh, she has the bell on and still didn't get the... Yeah, and two please uh, said it too. Because that bell no longer is guaranteed for notification. That bell is like an extra bit of suggestion as to like actually getting if notified. You're, if you're lucky, we'll notify right. you. So, like, so if you... Uh, just want to help the channel out you can subscribe and you'll never be bothered <laughs> you can hit the bell button which you might get a notification but i think the only way to actually stay notified of the ongoing things as far as like this latest iteration of the algorithm goes is to actually just watch a ton of the of the videos of that channel mm. yeah it's like your your behavior will dictate whether or not you're going to get a notification or not like, wow Asking a lot here, YouTube. You're asking a yeah, lot. Yeah, they're asking a whole lot. Like, so yeah, Andrew Leiter says I hit the bell. Still no weird, but we're here now. I'm like, yeah, there you go, there you go. I think I need to like. Um, so we haven't sent out like newsletters and stuff like that in ages. We we switched platforms for website and stuff like that a long time ago, and we no longer send like emails saying when the show starts. I might go back to that. I guess that's After you hit new. the bell, I'm pretty sure it asks you, do you want all or some of the notifications? Okay. Ah. I hit all and got a notification. Okay. That might be something new. That is new because I didn't know nothing about that. Yeah. Victoria, I wasn't even showing up on my subscription page. I had to search your channel to find oh. it. <laughs> 
Thanks, YouTube. Way, way, way to look out. Way to look out. Jeez. Yeah. So hopefully, I don't know. People can catch it on the rebroadcast, right? Uh, Kid Manga X. Hey, Than. First time live viewer. I read the rules and had a quick, quick question. Can we set the scheduled delivery date to be over a month out? I have a vacation next month and still setting up a tank. Um, that's a kind of a rare circumstance. We might be able to help you out. Um, it's kind of a long way out, and sometimes um, like things can happen to corals just over, yeah, over the course of a of, month. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's kind of risky on your end. Um, but at the same time, a lot of what we have, we have multiples of. So, like, if you were to purchase, I don't know, what are we, what are we looking at right now? Like, number eight, like these Keds Red Zoas, we have plenty of those. If that exact coral might be looking a little rough, but by the way, it would look rough specifically because a fish came and ate it. Like, <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. It's because a fox face came and ate it. We have others that we could, we could sub in, that sort of stuff. But if you're going to get something really, like, unique, um, that might be more of a risk to hang on to for a month. So consider that. But yeah, like a, a month, right around that a month time frame would be about the max that we would be willing to do that. So Adam says, yeah, asks all, occasional, or none. Why would you hit the bell uh, button and right. select none? So you've hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, to not get notifications. Right, I can understand all the time or occasional, but none. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, even, I, even occasional, it don't even sound right to me, because like, if that's the case, then you just, whenever you feel like going to look at that channel, you just type it in and go look at it. Yeah, but I'll tell you though, like most people don't realize this about YouTube. Um, subscribe, well, subscribers 100% don't matter. Mm -hmm. Now, it helps to have a subscriber base. That just mm -hmm. countered my whole point, right? Mm -hmm. But when you look at what causes people to actually view your videos, mm -hmm. subscribers is not high on that list. Nope. And your subscriber base, uh, they, they might navigate to it based on their, on their front page of suggestions and stuff like that, uh, but that's a small percentage, and that percentage never really matters after about the first 48 hours. Mm -hmm. After the first 48 hours, the thing that drives viewership to any video, it's gonna be the YouTube's, um, notif not notification, but um, recommended video algorithm. So I think that as time goes on, uh, like all the other things are really gonna take a back seat to that algorithm. And I think they're, they're slowly phasing it up because uh, there, there's plenty of situations where you might see like a, a channel that has a ton of subscribers and they put out a video and nobody really watches it. Yeah. Whereas like a much smaller subscription-based um, channel, as soon as they put something up, it's like, it's just fire. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, and it's because you know, the algorithm has kind of like selected whatever it likes from that. And so like the, the subscriber bases to some degree do help could, to get that initial push for that 24 to 48 hours, but after that it gets, it gets kind of rough. So anyways, some actual coral questions. Do you ever come across Tubbs Blue Zoanthids? Um, not for a very long time. Uh, I think, if, if I'm thinking of the, of the zoanthid, if we're thinking about the same zoanthid, I think those are from Fiji, and Fiji has been closed for a little while longer. And also, Fiji, in my opinion, has like the nicest looking zoas, but they're also one of the worst shipping when it comes to import-export. So now they're not available, period, import-export-wise. But when they did come in, they were really tough to keep alive. So the ones that are in the industry right now are probably only from aquacultured sources. Mm -hmm. And because of, like, again, the combination of not being able to, to fly them in and only being available aquacultured, and they probably really haven't been available on, on a mass scale for a very long time, um, there, there might not be very many of those available, period. So that might be something if you do happen to, to see, to, to jump all over. 
uh, Utter Chaos Zoas. We have them. I don't think they're on this live show because we're currently growing them out. Utter Chaoses are from Indonesia. And when you're talking about Indonesian stuff, obviously there is like this, this uh, shipping ban. And um, yeah, no, it makes too much noise. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so, like, yeah, my mom just brought a whole bunch yeah, of like, crackly that's why I left like, it <laughs> Go away. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's kind of the issue with Utter Chaos, is that they're, they're Indonesian. So, again, pretty much uh, you're looking at aquacultured sources of that. Mm -hmm. Do have them, though. We do. Uh, Adam, kind of a newbish question, but my watermelon zoa has just randomly stopped opening up. Any thoughts? Um, usually when, I mean, what do you think? Like if your zoa just started just to, to close up, what would you be thinking? Like what would your thought process be? Well, either obviously something's messing with it, uh, you know, it, you know your own water quality, you know what you're kind of doing with your water. So, I you know, my first thing is what's irritating? Did I, you know, got a parasite or, or, you know, some kind of bug actually, you know, messing with whatever the fish nipping at it, like fox face or something like, something on those lines. But once again, also, you know, water quality, but for me, something's irritating it. Yeah, if I see that, the, my, my mind immediately goes to pests. Yeah. Oftentimes, um, it's just the introduction of any new coral. It's not even you're, you're introducing another zoanthid. Mm -hmm. So one thing that people don't quite understand, um, and, and that, that, that lack of understanding is just because you don't see thousands of corals all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But long story short, if you buy, um, like, you buy a coral, from a place that regularly gets in any kind of wild caught stuff. Mm -hmm. Like people think that just because a particular pest eats a particular coral, that all the pests stay on the coral. Yeah. They go everywhere. <laughs> so you can get like weird Acropora bugs by bringing in a, a new zoanthid mm -hmm. that happened to be in a system that also had like wild caught Acropora. You can get like Montipora eating nudibranchs by just buying live rock from somebody that has a Montipora with Montipora eating nudibranchs mm -hmm. because they do travel. And eggs, to a lesser degree, mm -hmm. can travel. Um, so it might have been just a simple fact that you, you got something new and now there's, uh, now there's a pest issue that's targeting zoanthids. Well, you might want to address that the whole dipping is not, the, it helps, but it yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to kill. Yeah, so dipping is a good practice. And mm -hmm. you know it is part of our recommended procedure for a lot of different corals. Um, but dipping is by no means a surefire, 100% successful thing. There's, uh, for example, with Montipore eating nudibranchs, I almost don't even bother dipping. <laughs> I don't actually. Sure. Like I'll do it if if it's just like so egregious, like it's just sitting right there on top of like a monster. Like okay, I can get that one. Mm -hmm. Right, I'll feel better about myself. It's the only thing that I've ever found to like deal with a lot of these pests is to have those pest specific predators in your tank, and that will help tremendously. But so we're talking like certain damsels, certain wrasses, and multiples. Mm -hmm. And just like just having that, that, that density of, of potential predators for those pests really helps. Because otherwise you could spend 50 hours a week dipping yep. and the nudibranchs will win at the end of all of that. Yeah, it's like you, you, will, you will dip until your corals are dead and mm -hmm. the nudibranchs at that point have already won. They will throw a party and look right at you. Yeah, so <laughs> things happen. So yeah, so Adam, it's like it couldn't hurt to do it again, but I would, I would look at, at potential livestock choices as well. Reef boy, what coral dip should I use when I get my first coral? Um, 
I don't know. I used probably three different ones, but they all, just whatever I can, is in reaching range for me. Revive or uh, even Bear I've used, mm -hmm. and uh, what's the other one? The uh, Coral RX. Coral RX, yeah. It, just whatever. I, they're they're similar in ways and they're different in ways. Some of them are iodine LP. based. Mm -hmm. Some of them are pine oil based. Bayer, whatever the heck that is, based. It's a, a, a it's, set aside. <laughs> yeah, it's just something that's milky and toxic. Eat pretty much. Make sure yeah. you give a couple good rinses with that stuff. Yeah, some people sometimes people use um, like hydrogen peroxide. Even it's that's really harsh. I would wouldn't be in a huge hurry to try that. With the peroxide, it's mm -hmm. very good to kill um, algae that's all entangled in your zoas frag plugs. It really does help, yeah. but it is toxic. Yeah, and it, sometimes it can cause micro bubbles in the flesh of the coral mm. and stuff. It's it's, it's pretty rough. Dave Davis says, nuclear war survivors, cockroaches in nudie Bronx. <laughs> it's, it's funny because it's like... Um, Pretty much. Whenever I see like these uh, underwater photographer types on Instagram, they're all mm -hmm. like, they love taking pictures of these brightly colored nudie Bronx, and it just gives me PTSD looking at that on Instagram. Just, I, can't, I cannot look at nudie Bronx and think, oh, that's pretty. Not possible anymore. How quickly do candy cane corals grow? Reef boy, pretty slowly until they really get going. Yeah, I yeah. Well, at the end of the day, it's um, a lot of the corals' overall growth has to do with uh, your your quality and how how stable things are. Mm -hmm. You know, plays a big part because there's not you can take two of the same coral and have two tanks in your house and that same coral, one of them might look at you and never do anything. The other one will take off. It just depends hmm. as far as growth rates and success and how fast things grow. That's yeah. how I feel. My, my stuff is actually fairly slow. Um, I mean, I, I always see like some people like, oh, you know, I've had this coral and it's grown like crazy. But They've had it for like six months or I've, something. I've had quite a few pieces months. of your coral. Mm -hmm. They just looked at me for a year. It took a year for them to decide to take off. But once they settled in real nice, they decide to go. But that's not abnormal. It doesn't matter if it's from you or anybody. It just depends on the coral, too. Yeah, sometimes it, it takes a while. Yeah. By the way, Nick Corn on Facebook says, Facebook didn't inform you for about 10 minutes after you started. See? Actually, Nick, <laughs> Facebook didn't even start that 10 minute preview thing. So it's like I have to set it to, to for, for Facebook, it's like I, I'm gonna tell it when to start. And that's when it starts. So there, there was no like pre-gaming or anything like that as far as Facebook was concerned. And yeah, it's like didn't get a notification from YouTube, I'm subscribed and have the notifications enabled on my device settings and by tapping the bell and it's like nothing. Awesome. Oh. I would say stags. Carrie Robbins, right? Mm -hmm. What's the fastest growing SPS? Bird's nest? Or bird's nest. Pasilopora? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those, those are all very fast growing. Um, the bird's nests, we had a, a problem with how fast they were growing to the point that they were tanking um, our water chemistry. Mm hmm and because it was just like soaking up everything. <laughs> just drinking. <laughs> but then we had another incident where we were doing like construction in the greenhouse and uh, some metal and stuff got into our water and killed a bunch of them. We think that's what happened because we lost like a few large colonies. So our, our population of bird's nests is in check now. So I should probably like talk about what happened. Yeah. We have like a... We have some ballasts, some lighting ballasts over top of our tanks. That's, we, we kind of like mount all our lights to these uh, little fence things that sit above the tank. And the, the, the greenhouse does have a lot of precipitation in it. So we get a lot of water here and there. Well, while they were working um, up above the tank, 
one of these little ballasts got like bumped. And the ballast, you might be thinking, oh, it fell into the water. Mm -mm. It didn't. <laughs> it was full of water already. And all this water that had God knows what mixed into it at that point just poured into the tank below. And I think that for the next couple of days, we had some weird die off. And I'm guessing some heavy metal poisoning because there's, there's copper and stuff in those pipes. Mm -hmm. Or pipes. Not even, ballasts, ballasts, lighting ballasts dumping into your tank. Probably not a good thing. John Rivas on Facebook. Hello. I've been struggling with Zoe, Joe Zoe eating nudies for months, dipping two times per week. After every dip, I see some nudies on the comment that I just dipped, had to buy four rasses. No more nudies. Yep. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in rasses. Yeah. That's, Sorry. That's I mean. about right. <laughs> I, I recently purchased a bunch of rats. So my, my, my systems here are a little bit different in that they're all shallower frag tanks. And so we do have, over time, and, and everything's open top, so over time we do have issues with, with fish jumping. Not a lot, but enough for you to lose like a fish here and there. And you can always tell when, when like you might start running into a pest issue when the last ras jumps out of that tank. Mm -hmm. And now you have to go and reorder fish and reintroduce them. And invariably, that is a challenge because these um, these large tangs and stuff like that are total jerks to new additions. So we're going through that right now. We bought like, I don't know, a couple dozen different types of wrasses. Cindy, I started using Aquaforest products. Have seen amazing growth on my acro. I'm sold on Aquaforest products. That's great. Uh, I have not, I had the exact opposite experience here. Um, when we uh, went with Aquaforest, I think we were using like either one half or one quarter of the recommended dosage, and I wasn't expecting to see any difference really. Uh, I was thinking, ah, oh, we'll just you know just we'll just slowly ramp into this, and it quickly started killing <laughs> stuff, and we lost probably like 30% of our corals or something. It was, it was an insane problem that we got. Uh, Texan Boyd, but having said that, Cindy, um, like one of my customers and friends, Will, I just did a, a video on his mm -hmm. tank. He does all aquaforest and he really likes it. So yeah, your mileage may vary. And it's, it's great that, you, that you, uh, you found something that works good for you. Texan Boy 22, what races do you guys like? Uh, yellow course ras, Christmas ras, Melanaris ras, um, six line ras. I know six lines get a bad rep, but uh, they do very well when it comes to those. Um, what else am I missing? Did you ever do like the? Um... I did the pink pink stripe Hawaiian ras. Actually, does a very good job. It was the first one. It's the only one I've ever purchased. And he does a really good job cruising and looking up and down the corals. Huh. So. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I, I didn't know neither. I actually bought it a couple years back, and it was a new ras that came from Hawaii. So hmm. um, I still have him, and he does very well. I'm um, going to ask kind of a noob question here, because this is like a little, little tangent. Uh, is Hawaii open for fish? Good question. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, last thing I last I knew that they shut down, but I heard that it was shut down. But then again, I don't think there's, there's a shortage of yellow tangs. But there's not a shortage, and that's kind of what I've yeah. been seeing. Like uh, Lisa's aquatics is here. Hi, Lisa. Hey, How's Lisa. Did you, so, Lisa, real quick, did you get a notification? We were talking about that for like the last half hour or so. Um, Looks like uh, a lot of people aren't getting notifications today for the live show, so glad you found it. But so, yeah, uh, again, Hawaii. Uh, I've seen nothing to indicate that there's a closure, but I heard it was closed for fish. It's always been closed for it's corals. It's always, yeah. I have no idea. Reef Boy, are you going to Aquashella, Texas? Um, yeah, I'm planning on going. I haven't actually made travel plans to go yet. 
So I haven't like booked anything, no flights, no rooms or anything like that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to go. That's in March, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lisa said, I got no, no, no notification. Ryan said, I did not get one. Mm. <laughs> I heard they will not be renewing licenses as they expire in Hawaii. It's like, okay. That makes sense then, so. Okay, so they're easing out of that. Uh, somebody was asking about palytoxin in green star polyp. I haven't heard of that happening. In green star polyps? Yeah. I haven't heard of that neither. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. Also, though, um, real quick on the Hawaii thing. Um, Hawaii's not hurting for fish. It's they're they're documenting and doing something to uh, with when it comes to the fish population to keep it actually to get it to open back up. Mm -hmm. There's um something going on there, but uh, as far as what the people that are actually going out and studying and seeing the however they do it when it comes to the fish population. Mm -hmm. um, just documenting and bringing it so it can go through the whole court process and open whatever, open it back up. So um, they're not, there's not a shortage from my understanding from what I've heard and read, there's not a shortage when it comes to any yellow tank or anything in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that because Hawaii is pretty, pretty on its stuff when it comes to their I feel when it comes to their, you know, whatever, I mean, yeah. fishing industry or something, so. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, yeah, just because I could, it, it, yeah, I, it might be comparison stuff, because I think that there's, compared to other geographies where um, they might not be very environmentally conscious, and there might be a lot more risk of like just straight up corruption. <laughs> you might get some some really bad things happening. So, it, comparing that to Hawaii, I think yeah, you're you're a lot less likely to have that sort of situation mm -hmm. happen. But then again, I don't know. I don't go to these places where they collect or anything. Me neither. So you, you kind of got to just go with. Not, don't believe everything of what you say, you know, or someone says, or what they're saying, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Kind of what I heard, so don't take it, you yeah. know, as a holy grail of what's going on because we don't know. And this is that. also why I kind of like to do diving whenever I can and actually mm -hmm. shooting video, it's because I think that people um, there, there's like there, well, especially like when you're in like landlocked state like Ohio, there's mm -hmm. a huge disconnect from the ocean, and you we don't see it underwater a lot. No. So it's really difficult to. You were just reading headlines, and you're gonna you're gonna read mm -hmm. contradictory headlines a lot, and it's like, well, what really is going on out there? It's, it's hard to tell unless you actually go, and and sometimes, and again, I, I like to try to document as much as I can because, you know, we forget, <laughs> and it's, it's yeah. sometimes it's good to go back and just look at that footage and see like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I totally forgot that that's what that place looked like. Or you're seeing all these different details. Two, please, again, thumbs up, people. Come on. <laughs> How many thumbs up do we have? I don't even know. Um, I don't even know. You have 19. Nice. Thumbs up? Thumbs up. That's not bad. Out of 67. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean... Um, could be better, but yeah, I think I'm just getting killed on like the on the you, notification. You you are You're, yeah. You totally like. I'm like over here trying to be calm. <laughs> and I, deep down the side, I'm irritated right now. Aww. <laughs> it's like, come on, YouTube. Why would you do this? No, YouTube is not helping me out. So, we had just covered number. Uh, number 39, which is some um, micromusa. So, okay, I've, I've got two, uh, two talking points when it comes to um, like micromusa lords and stuff like that. So the first one is like the whole thing about naming. Mm -hmm. And it's like you can't win when it comes to naming. You just can't. So if somebody were to make a video 
that calls that choral an Akan by our Banky, mm -hmm. invariably somebody in the comments is going to say, It's a Micromusa. It's a Micromusa. You don't know what you're talking <laughs> about, you loser, right? <laughs> Right. But then it's like, but there's all these different perspectives that people aren't really taking into account for. So if you were to, to be an importer and then you're importing that coral and you insist that that's a micromusa, okay, mm -hmm. get ready for a five-figure fine and potential jail time. Mm -hmm. Because when you're dealing with fish and wildlife, they are not messing around about what is in that box and what you say is in that box and what is actually in that box. And according to CITES paperwork, that is not a Micromusa. Mm -mm. That is an Acan Lord Hoensis. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you want to be the nerd that has to stand up and say, actually, <laughs> that's a Micromusa, they'll be like, what did you say? Actually, here's your fine. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what did you just say? Oh, by the Are way. you saying that that coral is not what is stated on the paperwork, on this official paperwork that you signed off on? And now you're in a world of trouble. So for a lot of the importer guys, like, you know, we talk to some importer mm -hmm. types and stuff, and we're like, yeah, like, that's not an ACAN. That's like, they're like, we know. But... <laughs> For all the, the things that matter. What like, it says, we're, we're just, yeah. we can agree with, it's, right. it's, a, it's an ACAN, right? Right, okay. So, but then if you're looking at like an online retailer like us, we actually tr sometimes use both names or mention that it's a Micromusa, formerly an ACAN, because we know what really drives traffic to our website. And what drives traffic to the website is Google. And if people are searching for Acanthastria trying to purchase that coral, and I'm mm -hmm. insisting that it's a Micromusa, I'm being bad at business. And while I guess taxonomy-wise it's correct to follow that, that line of thinking, mm -hmm. what do I care what scientists think? Like, it, it, it sounds bad, but like, in, in, the, in the grants, okay, in chat, all 50 of you that got no notifications <laughs> and decided to hang out. 68. <laughs> um, can you, off the top of your head, name one PhD biologist that studies coral? Can you name one? And we know this is a 30 second delay, so. Yeah. Can you Google in, 30, <laughs> in, in the next five minutes somebody who has a PhD that. that so. We clearly don't care what they think because we don't know who they are. Right. Okay. So the, the, the whole naming thing, um, it's kind of a it's kind of muddy waters there. And not only that, but e like I'm not a huge fan of like the really crazy names. Like so, this one's called a Hell Rider Fabia, guys. But those names, I don't like to try to make them up, right? Because I'm like my my brain is like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. But it's actually helpful sometimes. Because if somebody were to, 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 to come and ask me, like, do you guys have, like, this Favites that is, like, red, but it's got a little bit of teal and a little bit of blue in it? Do you know which one I'm talking about? Be like, no, mm -hmm. no, dude. I have no idea <laughs> what you're talking about, right? But if it's something that we can Google and get an image for, now we're getting closer. Mm -hmm. So, like again, number forty-six is just like the blast furnace Fabia. It, again, that's also red. It's got some little streaks of green in here. It could describe a bunch of different corals at that point. And and sometimes the the person you're talking to is like, do you know whether it's a Fabia or a Favites? And some people might just use the two interchangeably. I think in in many ways we use it interchangeably because I think the previous guy. The, the, what we call the favia is really a favites, mm -hmm. but the market calls it a favia. So, again, you kind of get into this, this this gray area. And for identification purposes, just knowing that it is a favia or favites does not help you. Um, knowing that something is a micromusa does not help you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I don't try to keep up with the Joneses when it comes to these names and being scientific. That, that's your job, buddy. <laughs> Not my job. Because <laughs> I don't want it. 
Mm. Yeah, Victoria's like, enjoy your $5,000 not a Yeah. Game. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh, so, so Marine Hobby, we can't say corals or it's five years. Like, it's like, mm. where's here? Yeah. yeah. Adam's like, where are you from? India. Oh. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, taxonomists keep changing names on things so they keep their jobs. Uh, Maybe. I don't know if it's so well. Sad, funding, um, funding is a thing. Like mm -hmm. it's it's to chase down funding for for marine biology. That sounds like the least fun job ever. Can you imagine like mm -mm. trying to convince a government institution or something like that to fund your studies? Mm -mm. That would stink. You know how many doors get closed in the people that has to Yeah, and you have to do to this get... as a living. You have to, you have to justify <laughs> like the existence of like your lab. Mm. Right. No, I'm good. Aqua SD makes up so many names. There, there's a lot of places that make up names. And, you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, the, the only thing that, that kind of grates on my nerves, and it's not even that big a deal, is when there's kind of a known name for something. Okay, so like number 49 here, Skittles platygyra. That might not be that well, known, that well known, but if I said to you like uh, a nuclear green paleothella or a mm -hmm. purple death paleothella or, um, or an utter chaos zoa that we had mentioned earlier, right? Those are very specific, well-known corals. Fruit loop zoas, radioactive dragon eyes, Eagle eyes. If you are a new and up and coming store and are trying to somehow ride this marketing wave of naming corals, and you rename a radioactive dragon eye to something else, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it very wrong. Mm -hmm. Because, like, there, there's that nobody's gonna search for this new made up name. Mm -hmm. and, and also, like, just a lot of the, the smaller stores, you don't have the clout to impose that name on the community, mm -hmm. right? So like, I think Tidal Gardens is at the point where if we release some crazy coral and came up with our own name for it, that it might actually stick. Now again, I don't love naming stuff because that's really doing all the hard work. Here's one, one particular, um, didn't somebody actually use yeah, there might give you, be. Give you a name or yeah. call it the TG something. And, and the thing, <laughs> if you go to our website, we don't TG anything. <laughs> Nothing is is TG branded, right? But um, but that's a, just a philosophical thing. But I guess it goes back to that original point that there is there is a time and place for some of these goofy names that's actually helpful. And if you are making it less helpful by having ten names for the same coral. That's when it kind of falls apart. Uh, curl myself. I could not find the live sale yeah. shipping option. Uh, when you check out, there should be one that says like a live sale slash local pickup slash adding to an existing order. But if you um, if you happen to overpay for shipping, don't worry about that. We always refund shipping when that happens. Sometimes uh, uh, people purchase a bunch and um, they pay for shipping. But then they come back and purchase more later, and they get over two fifty. We go back, and then we we refund shipping. So we're playing a little text in the chat because I think somebody <laughs> thought it was Jamie logged into my account. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, it's me. I'm here. I'm texting. <laughs> Dan, want want to start a reef aquarium? This is A M asking. Mm. Ooh. But I have a limited weight floor, less than, uh-oh, that sounds like the metric system. Yeah, I don't know what 350 in kilograms is. Per square meter. Or, to keep a decent reef tank, I'm thinking of 120 by 60 centimeters with a height of only 40 centimeters. What is your advice? We have to do the math first to even understand what the... That's a lot of math, guys. <laughs> okay, so real quick... Yeah, we're at 76. We're climbing. Right. YouTube's what are we trying doing? to get there. <laughs> uh, what are we doing here? That's like a third of my usual. So 60 centimeters. 
um, two inches. That is, okay, so uh, 60 by 60 is, um, so 24 by 24, so you're basically talking 60 gallons. Oh, no, no, height of 40. So you're talking about like a 40 gallon, right? Because if we do 24 by 24 by 18. That's like 40 gallons. So that's yeah. about 40 gallons. Yeah. Uh, that's not that heavy. I wouldn't worry too, too much about that. 771 pounds. So, okay, so does this house have a crawl space underneath or a basement? If so, what you would do is just put um, jacks and supports for the beam. But, but I don't know. So we're talking about like either something that's 40 gallons or something that's 80 gallons. Let's, let's call it like a 90. I, I would say closer to, yeah, maybe. Okay. So 350 kilograms per square meter to pounds per foot per square yeah, foot squ yeah square foot this doesn't help me at all i, I have no mm. idea what this means okay so square two pounds per, per pounds per foot but yeah try that that's no help either that's that's not helpful um <laughs> but i mean I, I know how heavy a 90 pounds per probably is Uh, okay, so that's 257 pounds per square foot. And how many square foot? Uh, how many square feet is in that? Uh, like four by roughly, you basically divide that by five. For 771 Seven. divided by five-ish, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. you're, you're but, yeah. but then you're talking about the stand, you're talking about the weight of the well, glass. Well, the glass, the substrate, the rock, wall, you know. Yeah, stuff is going to start it's, getting... It, it climbs very fast. Yeah. What's, what's the worst thing that can happen? Your tank go crashing through the floor. Well, the thing is... Or um, you can support it. it. That's the thing, though. If you're, if you're worried about it, then you have a crawl space. You just... Put jacks, you know, uh -huh. support beams. Yeah. And they're fairly cheap. I mean, you can get a couple support beams at Home Depot that, you know, just, and that's it. You know, mm -hmm. they sell them in different sizes. Well, I don't think this guy has a Home Depot. Um, I don't know where <laughs> he's from. But it's like, he ain't some place that has Home Depot. Well, then you just get you some um, paver bricks and stack them. And <laughs> yeah. It's oh, a four okay. by so, two oh, so, foot. So okay. Okay. all that math, and then it's like what I'm asking is if 40 centimeters deep is okay for a reef. It's probably fine. Yeah. Uh, you, there's actually a lot of people that do shallow reefs. Um, I think that it's, I think if anything, well, I was about to say shallower is sometimes better than deeper. But I'm like more volume is always better. Yeah, more volume wins. Now, too deep, it's more of a maintenance nightmare, mm -hmm. and you, you might have some some air exchange per unit volume issues. But long story short, uh, you're you're so much better off just with good volume. That yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, but no, but his his question: he forty might, centimeters versus sixty centimeters. I would go for sixty. Well, he, and he lives in an apartment, so he might want to check with the apartment management in the first place maybe yeah to you know if <laughs> the last thing you want to do is be homeless over a fish tank <laughs> or worse or worse yeah uh 30 centimeters one foot um my frag tanks are one foot but they're they're much bigger so there's that Is it dangerous to have very high par lights for just a short or for just a shorter photo period? Um, for a shorter period, how how short? And how 
Um, how bright is very high? Because yeah, here's the thing, most things don't need very high. A most lot things of things don't need very high. And it really depends on who's, who's high or what's your high versus my high or versus, I don't know if the, that might be a good topic to talk about. For you to make a video on, no, you did it. You need to do an update well, anyway with your T fives and all that. That was a great video. Thank you. By the way, I think a lot of people got to see a great difference in the way your camera picked that up and the, the variance of the colors of the corals and stuff. That that's probably one of my favorite videos, to be honest. I, I should I should reshoot that. It's just yes. it's, it's just tough to set it all up again. Yeah, that's that's the that is an awesome video. Um, but as far as like intensity, there's very few corals that really take advantage of really intense light. Exactly. So you might not get very much benefit from that. Uh, can I use a short photo period to compensate for them being so bright? Honestly, like you think of uh, think of like you on a beach getting a sunburn. Mm. It only takes a little bit of time for you to get a sunburn if it's intense enough. Mm -hmm. So. Like really short time to get a sunburn, right. really short. Or will I still get bleaching? <laughs> you probably will get bleaching. Mm -hmm. uh, but that can be solved really easily just by not turning the, the, the lights that bright or raising them up. Uh, Reef Boy is asking, what fish do I keep? So um, right now we're, we're doing fox faces for algae control which are being a little bit problematic because as they get larger, they get more nibbly on coral. But it's not all coral, it's just newly added coral that they get nibbly on, they get curious. Uh, then we do copper band butterflies for um, specifically Aptasia. You don't have to use copper bands, we just like them. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna do copper bands, you have to make sure they're, they're fed very well or you have a ton of rock. Um, so they're, they're not good for like smaller aquariums. Uh, let's see. Um, we do a ton of wrasses, Melanaris, Yellow Chorus, um, like the pygmy possum wrasses. Six lines, they don't really do much, but we have them. Uh, and leopards, leopard wrasses I like a lot. And we also do a couple of damsels. And I specifically like the Springer Eye damsels. They're like the blue ones with mm -hmm. black spots. Those are the best. Yeah. So just getting like a few of those helps a lot. Six lines, I, I, you hit a point on six lines. I think six lines do the best when they're juveniles. At actually taking doing, care of... Doing things, yeah. Because I, I feel like they're more childish. And you can see them do things. But huh. as they get older, they kind of... Just want to wait for somebody to get out of line to go check them. Yeah, or you they get put, aggressive. Yeah, get <laughs> yeah, they definitely get aggressive. So I think that that's everybody's complaint about six lines is that they make it tough to have other asses. And I have two of them in one. I have a three of them actually, six lines. Yeah, and you know, I haven't really had that many issues with them mm -hmm. with aggression wise, but then again, I have asses jumping, so maybe I do have aggression issues. <laughs> Uh, Graham Wood, how do you feel about peppermint shrimp? I like them. Um, I think they're a good alternative to copper band butterflies. I've been getting that question a lot. And I'm thinking that these some of these people that are having this issue has been being sold camos instead of... Could be. Instead of peppermints because they keep saying, my corals are getting eaten by peppermints. And I haven't had that issue. I've mm. had that before. It's it, really uncommon. Um, I mean, peppermint shrimp, you know, they're, they're opportunistic. Tunis, yeah. They'll, they, and they can do damage, and they obviously eat coral-like things because they're, they're eating the aptasia Tasia, for you. Right. Um, but, yeah, I guess, it, I, I, I guess it's the same sort of risk that you run into with a copper band butterfly or a fox face. Like, s things can happen that are kind of unexpected. You might be getting weird interactions. Mm. So, I mean, anything is possible. You know, I've, I've heard of like, of corals that we keep all the time. And they're like, that ate my dwarf angel. I'm like, <laughs> really? But I guess it did. I mean, it's weird. Yeah, it's definitely not the norm. It's like, my elegance ate my dwarf angel. Are you sure your dwarf angel didn't die and just happened to land on it? Which would also be weird. But... But I'd never 
I, 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 I don't know. I, I sometimes I don't put past anything that happens sometimes in the hobby, yeah. but I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be. I would believe it if it was like an elephant hair mushroom or something like that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That, that could do it. But like a mini maxi anemone, maybe? Yeah, maybe. That'd, that'd be weird. But that would be weird. <laughs> yeah. Impossible? I don't know. But weird. <laughs> oh, Manier McNamee logged on late, but I see Than made Rico cover up the worldwide coral shirt. He didn't make Rico do anything. See? But. Look at this guy. <laughs> he comes to a Title Gardens live show wearing a worldwide coral shirt. He did blast me, though, didn't he, on Instagram this morning? <laughs> He's like, actually, he, he blasted like, me ever... before, be, before we even did all that. I came in, he's like, um, did you really wear that? And I'm like, what? I just threw some, you know. It's like, don't ever ask me for a free shirt again. <laughs> uh, John Madlos, I just upgraded to a 40-gallon tank, and I only have two percula clowns. Any recommendations for new fish? Mm. That's all you. I don't know why clownfish is so popular. I know. I, I feel like I gotta have I can't have a retank without a pair of clowns. God, they're so mean. They're so they, mean. They're really not. What well, maybe in a Awful. smaller system. In a larger system, they just got this little space that they never want to move. Awful the only animals. time they go after something if they get too close. It's like you just got two raccoons. <laughs> I'm showing my clownfish hate, huh? Um, 40 gallon tank, two clownfish. I guess, well, so, so my thought process whenever it comes to fish is, is there a, a job function that I would like these animals to do to make my life easier to, to, to care for this tank? Um, so th obviously I'm, I'm, I like some, some manner of pest control, so mm -hmm. maybe a, a smaller ras might be good. Um, I also like any kind of algae control, but a 40 gallon tank might be a little small for a lot of fish that can handle algae issues. Uh, Toby Brook, why are leopard wrasse so hard to keep? Um, good question. Ironically, we've had good success with, uh, with leopard wrasses in our last shipment. I have a feeling that a lot of it boils down to how they were collected to begin with. Yep. So, with a lot of sensitive fish, actually. Yeah. Because I think that once they're stable in your tank, they're just like any other fish. They're, they don't have any kind of hardiness issue. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, um, like the collection procedures, wherever they were collected, might not be the best. And also, um, how long were they, um, how long is the time from when they were caught to when they were delivered stateside to a wholesaler, from that point then to your retailer? And then from that retailer to you. Because the closer you are to the point where they were caught, the worse it is. Mm. So if you, are, if you are ordering stuff directly from a wholesaler, for example, that is the biggest risk. Absolute biggest risk. Yeah. Um, there's no guarantee that, that any fish that you get in that way is going to last more than 48 hours. And it's, they will die looking perfectly healthy with fat bellies. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So, and sometimes, like there's there's still issues with cyanide catching, and it's 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 kind of hard because if you don't order fish all the time, too. Like if you were in the business of importing fish and stuff, you would know a lot better. Mm -hmm. But if you're just an average consumer, there's no way, no way to know. Um, Adam says, um, any algae eating fish you'd recommend for thirty to forty? There's really not. Not. Nah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's yeah. I recommend one. It's right here. Manually. Yeah, I mean you could pr like so. So a thirty to forty gallon tank is very manageable size. Yeah. To do a lot of stuff manually. I mean, I guess you could put a little lot more blending in there, but I don't know what it's going to really do. What's it really I mean, your 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 hand would be in the siphoning with the water change and bringing out nutrients levels for that system. It's really nothing. Mm -hmm. You can fix that in no time. Yeah, and thanks again too, please, for the dollar ninety nine. He's such he's such a trooper. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, what's up, Luke Schnabel? How's it going, uh, Crystal Guest? So how many tangs for a two hundred gallon tank? 
This is, it's not a bad question. It's not a noob question. It's not anything. No. no. But you're going to get a wide range, wide of, like, yeah. range of disagreement on that number. So, Rico, how many tangs do you think would be an appropriate stocking level for a 200 gallon? So, first off, I'm going to look at, I'm going to be, you know, look at my system and use, use better judgment and reality uh, and what I'm going to stock it with. I'm a SPS junkie, okay? SPS are not going to stay one inch. They're going to get very big. And as these corals get very big, it, it's doing what? Taking up swim room as well. So for me, I want to keep it probably around five, maybe six tops for a system my size. I can't say for what size. Which is, is how big? Uh, 550 gallons. Okay. So, and I'd rather have five unit to six tanks that are going to get pretty decent size and I'd rather just have a bunch of smaller fish that are going to stay between one to maybe three inches. Um, you can get a lot more fish, you get a lot more movement if you're into fish, um, but overall when it comes to tanks you don't you don't need a whole army of tangs in any size of aquarium. Just a couple pieces that are going to be your show fish and, and call it good. There's so many small little, like the Springer Danzels and Blue Reef Chromuses and, you know, some of these fish that are going to give you tons of movement, wrasses and fairy wrasses and, um, you know, all these smaller fish and gobies. And, I mean, you could really do a system. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't, you don't need, it, it, based on your system um, size, um, you know, you might only need one, one tang, one to two tangs. It just depends on the, the tank size. You got to remember, they cruise and they constantly pick the rock all day. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to overdo it. You want to be able to let them naturally be, have their space and they can work in sections of your tank. Yeah, I'd agree with all that. I would definitely not go over three. That would be, I'd say that's pushing it for me. But that's the, well, that, but I'm, I'm super conservative when it comes to stock But you, you, you would say that would be pushing it on your new tank that's coming, that's 10 and a half feet no, no, long? No, by, 200 gallons. Oh, for 200 gallons, yeah. I missed that. Yeah, 200 gallons. Okay, for 200 gallons, I'd probably only do about three. No, I would probably only do two. I'd probably do like one tang and one fox face. Mm. or one fox face and probably no tangs at all <laughs> but <laughs> so, yeah you, something uh, like that so like a copper band butterfly or something yeah i would i would probably do three tangs plus a fox face two yellows and a purple or something like that or maybe a powder blue a yellow and a purple i don't know whatever but for 200 gallon i think that's plenty Luke says, if you go with, this is Luke on Facebook, oh. if you go with three tangs, you can get yourself a yellow tang, a bristle tooth tang, and a blue tang. Great algae eating crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Luke's on my side. Three. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> uh, two, please. Uh, well, so so in, the, in the YouTube chat, they were talking about um, pygmy angels. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a hard no for me. They are so destructive. I got a pair of Lamarck's Angels, a trio of Lamarck's Angels, but those, those guys are okay. So Geo's Reef is wondering, good afternoon, what are your thoughts on, on I'm going to say, Moorish Idols? Um, I think Spellcheck got you there. I'm, I'm good on those. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I don't care how, I don't know. Uh, what's the other one that's like a Moorish Idol, but it's not the Moorish Idol, it uh, looks like, similar. Hmm. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I can't remember the name of it. I don't know what looks like a Moorish idol. Well, kinda. Huh. Like a, it's not a, it's not a butterfly. No. Is it a batfish or something? No, it's not a bat. I, I can't, I can't think of it. Maybe somebody in the chat knows exactly what I'm talking about. But I don't know. When it comes to Moorish idol in a reef tank, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I don't know about you, but. And, no, and, they're they're um, and they're hard to even. They're hard to even feed. Feed, yeah. Because yeah. so when, when it comes to certain uh, fish, that when we say <laughs> something is hard to feed, okay, there's there's two parts of that problem. One part is they don't actually consume any food. 
So you put in like pellets, they don't do anything. Mm -mm. You put in frozen food, they don't do mm -mm. anything. Um, and they just slowly starve. Because some, 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 some fish are what's, what are called obligate coralivores, meaning they only eat corals. And so you have to provide that very specific coral for them to eat, otherwise they're going to perish. Mm -hmm. So there's that aspect. So they're, 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 they just will not even offer at food. Okay. I think that might be a banner fish. Okay, schooling. Yeah, have you fish. seen that? I might have. You can pull it up, though. Um, the other part of the feeding equation, though, is like sometimes you can get them to eat something. So they're eating frozen, they're eating pellets even, and they die anyway. Okay, yeah, that does like look. It's a heniocus. Yeah, that's okay. yeah. These. Yeah. If you want, if you want. That's a butterfly fish. Is it a butterfly? Yeah. I didn't know what it was, <laughs> but I because I never heard it. Um, as part of the butterfly, but mm -hmm. obviously it is. Yep. But uh, those, that's what I would, uh, you know, maybe. A but, banner fish instead of a Moorish idol. Yeah. Okay. And I've had a friend that had one of these inside of a dominant SPS reef tank. Mm -hmm. Now, how they are when it comes to LPS or something, mm, I don't know because. Yeah. Um, I can look up and see. Mm. Their um, temperament's peaceful, yeah, with uh, with caution. Reef that sounds like no, it's not even no, it's not reef compatible. Yes, there you go. It says yes. That sounds like something that's going to eat all your micro Mm. It's a false marsh idol. That's what they consider it, false marsh idol. Okay. So, and one twenty five or larger is the recommended for being in a reef. Mm hmm. Okay. So. Yeah, so. Thank you guys for that help. Yeah. So even if um, some of these more delicate fish are consuming food, there might be something nutritionally that's just absent from the food, mm -hmm. and they'll just, they'll just struggle and die, even though they're eating constantly. So, so for some of these, these, these fish that are really difficult in that way, like certain bat fish are like that, uh, certain butterflies are like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it can be a, a real challenge, and that's something you really have to, to look out for, not just their propensity to be destructive to some of your corals. Right. Uh, any soft corals being offered in the live show? Uh, yes, Kid Manga X, there are. Um, we, we did start off with, with zoanthids, but there are other soft corals as well. Okay, I have to take a quick bathroom break, so I'll be right back. All right. We drank a bunch of cherry, cherry Coke, Coke before this. <laughs> oh. Is any soft corals? Uh, yep. Let's see. Right away. So, Geo's Reef. Were you considering getting the marsh idol? I suppose that's why you asked the question. Uh, they get quite large. Coral eaters with caution. Yeah, I, and you know, that's why I looked up uh, on Live Aquaria to see what they said about it. They say, they say they're... Um, um, you know, pretty good. Rico's party now. <laughs> yeah, I missed you yesterday on the live on the live show. Or yeah, I went live last night, so I missed you too. Please. Uh, what's your favorite zoanthid, Reef Boy? What's my favorite zoanthid? So the only zoanthid that I actually maybe a couple, but um, utter chaos is, is the only one. I'm not a really big zoa type person, um, but, but I see myself getting into it with the new build. Tons of different kinds of zoas all over the rock. Um, I'm still having a hard time with it because I kind of want to go back to my blue cloves because I just love the blue clove look all over the rocks. So. By the way, I think I did miss some super chats. So Dave Davis, thank you for the $3. Mm -hmm. And two, please. Rico's party now <laughs> for the little for the short bathroom break. Yes. 
<laughs> hey, Krieger. He says, nice Monty, the Superman Monty. Yeah, I don't know which one that he saw, though. Yeah, because... Mm. There's, a, there's this delay, so they might have seen, like, a couple of Montys earlier. Gabe's Reef Tampa. What's this good starter fuzzy stick? Stylos. Um, cat's balls. Mm -hmm. Bird's mm, nest, bird's not, nest. Not too bad. Birds of paradise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, any of the any of the Seriatopora, that'll that'll look pretty good. Um, trying to think of like a Stylophora, Possilophora. <laughs> oh, did you show that or something? The Master Crocodile Skull. You know what? There, you... there is a like a really expensive Master Crocodile Island Scully that we have. We have an even better one that we haven't even taken a picture of. Yeah, yet. but did you post it or something? Because I'm wondering. No, we have one up, but it's oh, not, you have it's one. not the oh, one okay. that you saw. Okay. You saw a different one. Yeah. That's even nicer. Yeah. <laughs> so so Krill myself, how do you get like how do you get the really good corals in general? Um you have to spend a lot of money. Long story a lot, short, a lot. a lot of money. So I'm going to be going to Vietnam on vacation towards the end of this month. And um, a lot of people don't know, because I didn't even know, that that's where you get bounce mushrooms from, mm -hmm. is Vietnam. And Vietnam, to me, was always a place where you get some okay-ish looking zoanthids. <laughs> at, okay at best looking zoanthids. Which by the way, nowadays, there's not that many zoas, so all of us, it's like, it's like you're in prison. And it's, <laughs> right. like, it's like uh, those other inmates over there, they're looking like Beyonce more and more every day <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> that's right. So that, that's kind of my, my situation with like Vietnamese zoas, right? Um, so, the way that you get bounce mushrooms from Vietnam, they'll be like, sure, we will sell you some of these bounce mushrooms. But see that 747 over there? Mm -hmm. We want you to fill that with ZOA orders. No, not even that. No, we want you to do this, X, Y, and Z. Oh, and by the way, now we need you to fill that 747 with ZOAs. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of how that goes, because they're going to use uh, the nicest corals to sell off the cor the other corals that the, they would have more difficulty mm -hmm. selling off. You have so, to take what they basically their trash with you. Kinda. Kinda. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just, probably not just, putting... not even trash. It's just volume. Like th this stuff would normally move more slowly. They, well, they have so much of it. Mm -hmm. It's now become trash. Not, not not that it's actually trash. It's just they just have so much that they need to get it gone. They need mm -hmm. to get rid of it. It grows so well. It's, you know, they just have to get rid of it. And by the way, you're going to have to fill that plane up yeah. if you want X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So I think I think some people kind of had this, this idea that... Um, I just need to have like a, a vendor's license and then I can set up an account with a wholesaler and I can just go and buy the most fire corals that they have. It doesn't work that way. For $10. It's like none of that is going to happen. It, it all sounds good because you want to cut out the middleman and mm -hmm. you think you're going to get such a great deal. In reality, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. you, and I don't know why, why people believe that if they do set up an LSE and, and, or get their wholesale license that they're able to Mm -hmm. Whatever they don't realize that they're still going to be spending thousands of dollars just to get that one piece. Yeah, they have no clue, and I don't know. Yeah, and, and there's plenty of. And, I mean, so just think of this way. So, like, let's say that you're a small startup store. You you can only spend X number of dollars, and yeah. there's there's some insanely nice, like four digit wholesale priced coral out there <laughs> that shows up on a price list. Okay. The chances of you ever getting sold that piece is like zero, mm -hmm. because there's there are people that spend fifty grand a week yeah, exactly. at that wholesaler. Mm -hmm. That 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 customer is going to get first, yeah, period. Get first shot at that, and some of like these these like really nice Croc Island scolies, they're one in a thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get lucky if you're like 
married to the into the family of the wholesaler. You might get but some favoritism, it. but then again, yeah, exactly. Because I, I, I am favored by some wholesalers. Yeah, and I know. Still, and still I get, didn't get the corals I wanted. No, man. <laughs> They're like, this one's not for you. This one's going to go to worldwide coral over here. So no. <laughs> it, it happens. Like the, and, and towards like the top end of the competition, um, yeah, there is a, an actual competition to get like the nicest coral sometimes that, that gets imported. Um, you're like you weren't in competition with getting good stuff against like live aquaria, mm -hmm. and they're filling up UPS trucks fill, yeah. to Wisconsin. You know, it's like yeah, a lot of a lot of wholesalers is like yeah, uh, if live aquaria wants this, they're gonna get this, not you. That doesn't happen often because I, mean, I think live aquaria wants like a big broad offering. Mm -hmm. They're not really into like the super niche. Um, hard to find space but based on volume if they wanted to they could oh, they just can, get all of it they can get it all yeah literally yeah if they wanted to be nasty i guess <laughs> nasty so that was an interesting little tangent that we broke off there oh there was something else that, that we thought we'd talk about too and you mentioned if somebody mentioned i can't remember what's that we were talking about it in the kitchen we were eating. Um, what was it? Was it about uh, maybe? Was it maybe about corals or something? <laughs> we were talking spending, about corals, <laughs> like spending money on so much corals versus equipment oh. or whatever. You remember or, or something like that? I can't remember exactly how I put it. Oh no, we were talking about. Uh, or stop. Oh, we were, we were just talking about um, that, that people sometimes are more willing to spend on extravagant pieces of coral mm -hmm. rather yeah. than on, on their actual aquarium systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and they, they, they bristle at the thought of, of spending a lot of money on their aquariums. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they bristle at our recommendations for equipment mm -hmm. when, like, in the grand scheme of things, you're very much more likely to spend so much more on livestock. And a lot of that funding might have been better put towards some things that would kind of like smooth things out over, through your experience in the hobby, right? Yeah. Like a better protein skimmer, better, more reliable, easier to service pumps, mm -hmm. better plumbing, better lighting, calcium reactors, things like that. Mm -hmm. All that stuff really does make a difference. but. For some odd reason, it's 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 tough to sometimes justify the cost of it, but then they'll go out and buy a, a bounce mushroom. I mean, it, it's like looking at the new facility here, spared no expense. We don't even got a tank in here yet, mm. <laughs> nothing. But it's all being done to really make things really well for the animals that we're going to be keeping here. Yeah. And uh, on the people working here, so that, mm, and uh, that too. it's less it's less taxing on maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, I'm going to answer uh, Krill myself's question. I love that name. Uh, <laughs> you get it though, right? <laughs> is the live show what you see is what you get? Most of it is. So if the coral just pops up, so I'm looking at item number 99 right now, which is the flower petal montipora. Uh, that is a what you see is what you get. The previous item. I think a little circle popped up and said that there's, that there's five available. One of those five people, assuming that five people purchased it, is going to get that one. But that is kind of more representative. And so that is more of like a stock item that we just had five of that we're offering. Um, so if you don't see a little stamp that says there's multiples of this available, then yes, it is a what you see is what you get. So uh, I would I would guess that the vast majority, 90-something percent, of all the corals that you're seeing during this live show are what you see is what you get. Okay, so it looks like uh, we passed the midway Threshold. point. Okay. I had to break up the, uh, the video into multiple things. So now we are on item number 100. And the, again, Jedi Mind Trick. And this is a what you see is what you get because it does not have that multiples available thing. And yes, Nate. Oh my gosh, that, that is the most, that, that's hilarious, Nate. 
That is. That and is it, hilarious. Because I've been in that situation. <laughs> Dan looks like the lawyer while Rico looks like the defendant. <laughs> He's going to jail, boys. Been there, done that. No. <laughs> he did not listen to his to his, his attorney. I did. I said, I said, dress nicer, and he comes in wearing a worldwide coral shirt. He's going to jail. <laughs> Period. Don't pass go. Do not collect two hundred. That is funny. That is so funny. Miss, there was a live show. <sighs> Jessica. So <laughs> <sighs> we're 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 kind of like sitting here just bonking our heads because uh, apparently very few people got notifications. Like very few people, so uh, uh, yeah. Usually we have like double or triple the viewership to one of these shows. Yeah, Texan boy. Yep, no notifications, and I don't know why. I, it like, doesn't. I it looks like it's it. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube just scroogled me. Yeah, it really yeah, did. Scroogled. I mean, you're almost breaking a hundred. We're at eighty-two. That's crazy. But it only took. Um, what an hour and, an hour and 20, 20 minutes, minutes. yeah <laughs> no that, that's just nuts because like 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 so a good live show it's like two something isn't it? yeah it's, it's yeah. over 200 peak <laughs> concurrent yes so meaning that over the course of like three hours it'll be a thousand people let's say mm -hmm. live for that three hour portion but not if nobody gets notifications I guess so hopefully that if you just go to YouTube, just generally, you'll see me show up and with the little live logo at the very least. But yeah. And I also think for you guys that are watching that want to make sure you don't miss anything, go to his YouTube channel. And if you're subscribed to the notification, unsubscribe and, uh, or undo the bell, then redo it. And I guess there's a, a thing for always be notified or occasionally. Click the always. I mean, it's kind of crazy not to click it just because, I mean, obviously there's tons of you guys saying, I didn't get any notification. We don't know if that's going to help. It's a yeah. YouTube thing, but at the same time, at least for future live streams, <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you might be able to uh, get the proper notification. So yeah. that's definitely something that I would do if I were you guys watching. Actually, at this point, I don't mind like running this back tomorrow. Just, do, uh, just seriously, just like you're like, what do I have to do on Sunday? There, there's no nothing. real. There's, there's a little bit of football on, yeah, kinda. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. I'm not. You know, I'm. You know, I'm into UFC and yeah. that type of stuff. But is there any fights? Is there a out? UFC? I don't know. I don't think there is. I don't yeah. think there's a good one coming up. No, soon. nothing worth watching. Gabe's Reef Tampa. Facebook is the only reason I knew it was on. That's crazy. See. That's crazy. YouTube. Um. Uh, so Kid Manga, it look, looked like a flea or something. Okay, so th this was, now that we've moved on to this tank, I had this ras in there. It's like this female Melanaris ras. And we put in um, some new uh, pumps in here. And this fish, all day. And I, and I <laughs> don't know how it even does this, okay? It swims against the current going both ways, because we have got a, one pump on, on one of the tank going left and the other one going right. But it basically makes like a big like circle of flow, okay? And they're, they're max spec gyres, really strong. It just makes a circular flow. This fish is swimming as hard and as fast as it can against the current all day. So you will see it on, um, <laughs> on like either in front of or behind these corals. Just doing laps. <laughs> Three times per coral, you'll see this fish just, just whip keeps, by. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. So we have to, uh, two Stan, questions. You didn't three even questions. show up in my subscription tab. I remembered from Facebook. What? Hey guys, I would like. Ekin Gonzalo on Facebook. Hey guys, mm -hmm. I would like to place a Duncan colony near some frog spawn. Do you think these two will harm each other? Um, they will fight. I was going to say sure. the Duncans would lose. They will. F I don't know if I anything think. will die, but they won't be yeah. super happy about that interaction. Yeah, the Duncans will never open up. Is it did say Duncans, right? Duncans and frog spawn. Yeah. Versus frog spawn. Yeah. No. Nah. Duncans would probably stay very tight and shriveled up. Um. Mm. Notifications don't work sometimes. Apparently not. Apparently not. 
Um, I don't think you mentioned the size of the frags showing up for sale. Did I miss that? I didn't mention it. Um, however, the frag plugs that they're resting on are one inch. So you can kind of like go by that. The size of what? The corpse? I think so. The frags. Size of the frags. <laughs> Krieger's Aquarius. Malev's Reef isn't helping you out. He's on li he's live streaming right now too. You know, it's um I'm not even be super like mad about that because for because I think as time goes on, everyone is gonna be live like way more often. Um, you know, people originally were upset when I was doing like the live show at the same time as like a frag swap going on in some other city. Really? Yeah. They're like, they thought it was like super shady. It's like, you know, so, such and such event is going on in such and such place. I'm like. Well, does the cable company work that way? Does the TV work yeah. that way? I mean, like, do they stop airing the football games because we're live right now? I mean, yeah. or and it's like, like, do you think they care? But, but what's crazy is like, uh, once I start doing like two shows per, <laughs> per month, then three shows, it's like, guys, flip a coin because there's a good chance that whatever event you had going on on Saturday, I will also be having a live show on. And it's called multitasking. Believe, yeah, well, and you know what, and, and, and Mark at Malev's Reef, mm -hmm. you know, Inappropriate Reefer, Rico, mm -hmm. like how many times do you live stream <laughs> over top of other people's stuff? Probably all the time. Well, they do it over top of me because I, I was original. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, and I really don't even live stream as much as, I, no. not nearly like I used to. I used to run marathons, but yeah. I kind of ain't got time for that anymore. I can just come over here when I want to live stream, just, yeah. just hang out for the show. So, no, it's like people in the live streaming world are going to be stepping all over each other's toes in a bit. Yeah. Well, I was about to say because YouTube is going to be trending a lot more towards live. But apparently, since I'm not getting notifications. I, mean, I don't think it's anytime soon, obviously. <laughs> they, they let you know that we don't yeah. care where you're live right now. Yeah, like, like, so scratch that, <laughs> that line of thinking. Yeah, Melanaris and Lunar Rasses do that. They seem to love fast current. Well, yeah, this one's nuts. Dan answers so many of our questions. There you go. Yeah, I try to. Everyone should get time slots. <laughs> <laughs> no, because if it, the bad thing about that is I'm not going to stop or work around anybody's schedule in my own home and I pay the bills <laughs> for my internet and my computer. I just do what I want to do, right? Because I know that's what you were going to say probably. Well, that, that and it's like, well, people have choices. And then here's right. the thing. It's a, a lot of times it's not a situation of, oh, <laughs> well, this person streamed, therefore that's it, they're gone after that. It's like, no, you can actually watch every live stream I've ever done yeah. going back four years if you yeah. wanted to, right? So like the, the actual sales portion of this show, um, it's going to go on for like a couple of days after the show. Mm -hmm. So it's really not that big a deal. But like I said, I totally don't mind just running because all the setup is done, right? And just me hanging out for three hours with you guys, not a big deal. So I might just do that tomorrow. Do you have some challenge scores coming up? Uh, do, coming up, um, I would guess maybe, maybe. Um, I forget exactly what the order of some of these corals were. I know that there are some coming up. But I know that there's another tank that's next to this one that we can't really put chalices in because that fox face is like not having <laughs> any of that. Mm. Yeah, so I was, um, I was worried about this fish doing laps because I apply um, this image stabilization to these clips. And sometimes when a fish jumps in front of the coral, it makes like the, that particular part of the program just go nuts. So I am glad to see that it, it's not going nuts, just ignoring that fish swimming by. <laughs> Frost. What's he want? No, he, he's, he's finally playing Call of Duty. 
Oh. Um, and he finally had his best game where he's actually positive instead of negative. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I completely stopped playing games. Like, stop playing video games. Well, you stopped playing video games. You still got your little phone games. I stopped what? playing that. No, you did. Mm -hmm. I stopped playing that, How too. How did that happen? <laughs> it seems like you were so into that. I kind of was, but now it's like, it's a dumb phone game. You know, you know how I knew it was a dumb phone game? <laughs> when I started to become more casual about it, and then somebody um, that, you know how you have to, like, get, form like little groups, like mm -hmm. clans or guilds or whatever that particular game calls it. Um, and this person was just like really being like an abrasive jerk. <laughs> and then I was just thinking, because you know, he's like you know, yelling at people for not, you know, doing all their duties or whatever. Yeah. And stuff like that. I'm, thinking, I'm just thinking, okay, either this person is a grown adult <laughs> acting all crazy over a phone game. <laughs> <laughs> or it's some like 15 year old kid screaming and yelling at perfect strangers on a phone game. So I'm like, I'm in the wrong crowd entirely. It's like, I'm out. Yeah, it's like, I don't need this in my life anymore. This is so stupid. I get it. Pug, <sighs> PUBG. No, nah, I don't play PUBG. I hear a lot of good things about it, but a lot of people that in Fortnite, but. I can't get it. Certain games, I think as you get older, it's just, you just got to know when it's not for you. Yeah. People always ask, like, because uh, uh, they, they, they ask if I, if I would do, like, um, like, a Twitch stream where I actually played a video yeah. game or something like mm -hmm. that. So there's a couple things why I would probably not want to do that, besides the fact that I'm not actually gaming any particular platform or game. Uh, part of it is... I would probably swear a lot. <laughs> Not probably, you would. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I, I say objectively offensive stuff. <laughs> I'm a witness. Yeah. So um, well, that's probably not going to be good. And the, the other thing is like, I'd be so bad at the games now because I don't... Because the only way you get good at playing these games is you put 50 <laughs> hours a week into them. That's the only way you really get good. Two plays. <laughs> oh this my. dude is trying to pick up my wife on a phone game. <laughs> awesome. Uh, like, <sighs> phone games. <sighs> <laughs> People are having too much fun in chat. <laughs> he said, Eat her more. <laughs> I'm done. What people, are, people are having too much fun. <laughs> you got to make it fun. YouTube messed us up, but uh, yeah, it's okay. It's good. Like, like I said, I, I I got no problems running this back. It's like it's like, what are you doing tomorrow, Than? It's like nothing, because I got I got all my social stuff done. I'm ba I'm basically like in cruise control until I get on a plane and leave. <laughs> so you know what? Maybe I will do two live shows before I leave on vacation. No, hey, why the same not? Stuff. Yeah. Well, you know what? And I'm actually not terribly, terribly worried about like the sales or anything like that. No. But it is kind of like a a, a bummer just to have no, like, the technology it, not work. Yeah. Like if it, if it was like, if it was like my broadcasting software. Or like my my video file got corrupted, or my mic doesn't work. You know, I I feel like oh that sucks, mm -hmm. but that's my that that was within my control. Right. But then when it's like the platform doesn't send out a notification, it's like Ugh, what could I have done? Well, I guess I could just get on all my devices, and start like you know saying hey, there's a live yeah, show going but... on. But but then again, it's like. Why would they get that notification either? They didn't get a notification the, that I'm actually live right this second. At the end of the day, I mean, if they're, you know, huh, weird. if they want to, you know, they're going to see it after the thing anyway, so. Or you're going to rerun it in again tomorrow, so. Yeah. Oh, by the way, so uh, so Krill myself just said, uh, don't worry, the government is on cruise control too. So uh, one part of the government that actually will directly impact me is um, the TSA, going through airports and um, 
Oh, for your for for yeah for international travel. Yeah. So I have to go through like, you know, the international terminals security and stuff like that at O'Hare mm -hmm. Airport in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So, I have a connecting flight, guys. Like, I arrive and I have an hour and forty minutes to get to my flight. So if there's like some big huge security backlog. Oh, because, you're done. Yeah, because of like not enough staffing. Wow. I'm, like, I'm going to be like, guys, the security theater is not working out for me right now. I need to get to my plane because mm -hmm. you need to stop with that silliness. I need to get up and out of here. So uh, on the way back, uh, I have like 40 minutes. And I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm resigned <laughs> to the fact of, and the thing is like, I've got, I've got global entry and everything like that. So I mean, I just go in a completely different line. And I just like just like tap a couple buttons on, on a kiosk, and then I should be going through. And I've got no like check luggage or anything like that. But I just have this feeling that coming back, I'm just gonna miss my flight, and I'm just gonna have to hang out. What's well, only forty minutes? Uh, yeah, that's a rough one. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we will see. All right, let's talk about corals and stuff. Have I missed anything? People were talking about video games still. Anybody get the master scully, croc scully? Uh, it'd be cool did, if somebody bought that. I could use that. <laughs> I missed it. Did it already? I didn't put. I don't think there is. There, there isn't. There isn't one on this live, live show. Okay. So I wonder if um, I don't know. Somebody might have just snagged it from the website. Yeah, that ras is having too much fun. It. I honestly thought it's like, is it going to just fall over dead? Because it is just going full speed and it's doing it all day long. Um, yeah, marine hobbies like that. Rass is on too many laps, and it just kept going. It just it never. It's it's still probably doing that. It's going full speed against the current. And Derek, what's up, Dan? Hey, how's it going? So Derek, uh, if you're late to this party. Um, I guess uh, and this is this is the last time I'm going to bring it up this hour. <laughs> I'll probably bring it up later. But I guess notifications for this show didn't go out. So like, there's a whole bunch of people that are going to be like, I didn't even know this this thing went on. <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's a Melanaris ras, that little blur that goes by every every uh, twenty seconds. Yeah, I got to get a female. I have a male. I gotta yeah, get me a that, female. that fish is just nuts. And it, it zips right in front of the corals, too. Yeah, because I was just thinking, it's just going to run out of calories. But that's how, that's how crazy um, like stuff is underwater. So uh, when you're diving, um, sometimes you see like a turtle. And like the dive uh, guides, they always tell you, don't chase after the turtles. Mm. Because like they can swim against the current effortlessly mm -hmm. and you will just run out of energy like really quickly just to fight against that current trying to chase a turtle <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you're not supposed to touch the turtles or anything like you're not gonna there's there's no point like if the turtles want to hang around you fine if they want to go away from you Sorry. they're gone they're yeah gone. they're gone <laughs> and I guess like that's the other thing that, that people are always scared of it's like oh what, what if you like run into a shark it's like you can't do anything about a shark <laughs> no there's n what are you gonna do there's not a lot you're gonna do about it here's what's here's what's gonna happen it's going to ignore you that's that's what's gonna happen sharks are pretty unimpressed by you They're really big and like you're really slow and clumsy and making bubbles that they don't like. Right. <laughs> Seriously, that's the funniest ras. He's he's putting in work. He's getting them gains. Which is weird because of all the of all the uh, Melanaris rasses that we do have, it's seriously um, one of the smallest ones that has stayed small. Because for whatever reason, um, they come from different uh, from different geographies, different oceans, and some of them are brightly colored and grow triple the size of others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's and I don't pay attention to like which ones I order because because I'm I'm always purchasing them for a function, just to like you know help with pest control and whatnot. And 
Yeah, and some of them, these are just, they stay so small. Same thing with manatees when diving. Oh, that's interesting. I never even thought about that. I've never, I've never dove with a manatee, but I guess that makes sense too. Just like underwater stuff, just being able to truck and you have no idea. Mm -hmm. Actually, guys, um, if you ever are just ever free, do a, a Google search for um, like hippo chases boat. Mm. Have you seen that? Have no. you seen that clip? But you reminded me what we were talking about, the Indonesia. Okay. Remember the city and the Wahoo yeah. people? Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I, I'll, I will get to that. Okay. So there's this clip of this hippo. Oh, actually, it's this clip of this boat. It's like a, like a, like with a, not, not people rowing, but like with an actual motor. Okay. <laughs> and you can see something that looks like you would expect like a fin to come up at some point. You know, it's like kind of coming after them. I think I did see it. And the seal came. You, you can see like this distortion. And then when this thing breaches, it's a hippo. It was chasing. Oh, wait a, a minute. Boat. No, I didn't see that one. Mm -mm. Yeah, it was like a full size hippo. And it was, it was <laughs> swimming basically like a whale. Like you would think that it was that fast. With the boat. Yeah. Oh, just keep it under. Yeah. And so I was thinking, oh my gosh, that would be abs. See, that's why hippos kill like. Oh, more, they kill a lot more of people, people than, than mm -hmm. anything. It's like all of a sudden, it's like this little, this little bit of uh, underwater brush is moving, and all of a sudden, the giant hippo, like air, airborne. Okay, so uh, we were talking earlier. Oh, by the way, chalices. Somebody was asking about chalices. Mm -hmm. Seeing some now. And actually, there, there's going to be more later as well but you're seeing some, some pretty decent ones now. I, I especially like this one, just because yeah, of its I'm shape. Thinking it looks pretty cool. Yeah. And people always look for blue stuff anyway. Um, but we were talking about how um, people completely overemphasize the, the size of like the reef aquarium industry in Indonesia. Because even like one of my one of my employees was saying like you know they have to open it up at some time because you know they're they're losing a lot of money with this industry being closed down, and Indonesia is the biggest coral market uh, exporter mm -hmm. in the world, and obviously that that's caused some some major issues as far as like you know availability of corals and fish and stuff, but like. I think people have this idea that Indonesia is like some backwater tropical banana republic where everybody's living in thatch roof huts and stuff like that and everybody just goes and collects corals and fish and that's like a big part of their economy. And that's simply not the case. So um, again, if you're just going to do, be doing a Google search, search Jakarta and look at the images of Jakarta. and. You know, I'll do, I want to make sure I have the, the population number correct here. Uh, okay, so I was close. Uh, Jakarta is like a very cosmopolitan looking city. And it has a population of 10 million people. To put that into perspective, that is very close to the size of Chicago. And believe me when I say that that was not built by coral money. <laughs> it's just not. It's like this, this thriving metropolis of a city. And to, put, to, to also put that into perspective, like Cleveland, Ohio has a quarter million people. This place has 10 million people. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not, like the, the, the coral industry, not a big priority for them. Blue Basin Aquatics, what's up? Welcome to the live stream. Nate says, I get the heebie-jeebies around hippos and rhinos. So I love rhinos. Like rhinos are great. There's this, uh, this what do you call it? It's like a, an ecotourism type park down near Columbus called The Wilds. Have you ever been there or heard mm -hmm. of it? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an outdoor safari. And you don't ride in your own car. You ride in like a, this kind of this caravan type <laughs> bus thing. And 
the animals come right up to you because they're burning like biodiesel, which mm -hmm. smells like French fries, <laughs> which might be like French it fry might oil. Be fried, that's what it's yeah, it smells right. like French fries. And like these animals come up. And um, I remember like a rhino came up and was chewing on my seat. Like that's how close it was. It was, it was the difference between me and you. And uh, the, the tour guide was like, yeah, be careful, they do bite. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is like right there. Like I'm um, yeah. a finger or but a hand. The rhinos are cool. He said be careful they didn't bite. Yeah, it's oh. like some big wild animal. Yeah, hippos kill more than sharks and lions, yeah. Tigers are up there too. Like, tigers can, can gank people. I mean, I, so I've, I've had cats now for a few years and I have a total newfound respect for um, like big cats because um, I remember when I wanted to like, you know, pick up my one cat and this was like the, the, the first day when she was even like little and I wanted to like, you know, show her where the, where the, the litter, litter box, box was. Mm -hmm. And the litter box was, is, has kind of like this opening. And so I wanted just to put her in just so her paws could like at least feel the litter in there. Mm -hmm. And she just put her paw up against the, the, <laughs> the doorway. Like, and it's like, <laughs> this cat's not going in there. Like, it just went boom. And she was like seven pounds at the time, and now she's like 17 pounds. I was going to say 30. <laughs> it's a big cat now. And so, like, I was just thinking, like, how crazy would it be to, like, oh, we're, we're in Mexico going around, and all of a sudden there's a jaguar, some, like, 250-pound jaguar. Mm -hmm. It's like... What are you going to do you, about that? What are you going to do about it? Actually, you probably never even saw it. I mean, a house cat would give you a run for the money, let alone at 17 pounds versus 250 pounds. Yeah, and, and that's like, and, and, you, and you see some video of these things like how, like I saw like a, I think it was like a jaguar or a leopard or something like, like dive into the water and come up with like a crocodile mm -hmm. and then climb up into the tree with the crocodile. Right. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's like, wait, you have cats? How's your suit so clean? It's a good question. You have to have garment brushes everywhere. Mm -hmm. Actually, my house isn't clean, that's for sure. It's fine. It's typical Ohio homes. We're country folks. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to clean my house way more. Um, I, I have to have like robot vacuums. He doesn't have vacuums. enough time in the day for it. Yeah. And so... And he's nuts. by himself, so it's really not as bad. Yeah, it's not like I've got like a family. Or anything. Right. Trust me, I know. Clothes <laughs> and toys, can't even walk anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Blue Basin, what's your favorite LPS? So let's start. He asked me, but let's go with you first. Because you're not that much of an LPS guy, but if you had to choose. Oh, um, I love torches. Torch corals. Torches. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love just the long string, you know, how long they're. They stretch and just weigh. It just, it's just, I don't know. That's hmm. that's me. I love torches. I think mine. It changes a lot. I, I it used to be elegances. It <laughs> I used was going to say be, elegance too, but it used just, to be blastos. Mm -hmm. um, I actually like uh, a lot of the really interesting favia and favites right now. There's a lot of interesting colors and color combinations right now with those. Uh, D Canthers, hey, what's up? You have to wear hats with eyes in the back for tigers. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. Uh, bull sharks, water clarity issue. Um, so bull sharks, this is how dumb I am. I, I actually pay money to go dive with them in Mexico. Um, <laughs> and you, I made a video. You can search for that on my channel if you're curious. Uh, hippos and crocs, you move, you die. Yeah. So the so uh, saltwater crocs, I guess, is a, a legitimate um, career hazard in in Australia for diving for corals. Lions are all over the place. Think it's regional. Yeah, you know, the like cats are cats can be really scary. Like big cats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Manny and Macmy says that was a jaguar. That's I'm guessing that's the one the one that like grabbed the. Grab the crocodile. Crocodile took mm -hmm. it up, and it's probably a caiman, but it still probably has a hundred pounds. That this thing's lifting with its face up into a tree, like that's awesome. <laughs> you 
Yeah, try, just trying to hold a cat that's trying to get away now times that by 50. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. So before I actually owned any cats, I wanted to have like some super athletic, mostly wild cat, like a serval or something like that. Those are pretty Or cool. a savannah. But mm-hmm. knowing what I know now about cats, <laughs> if I had a 45 pound serval, um, there's nothing you can do about that animal. No, don't, like, don't, you're not going to fight him. He'll whoop you every day. <laughs> yeah, like you are absolutely in danger. This, so um, I, I, it was some podcaster that I heard. I, I don't remember exactly who, but yeah, you know, this guy's like kind of like kind of strong and beefy. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's like a he's a muscle meathead type, mm-hmm. and he, he's got a podcast and he's talking about like the time that he um, saw like a little baby chimpanzee. <laughs> and this little baby chimpanzee, when he, when he like was holding, he was like, "This thing doesn't even feel like it's made of meat. It feels like it's wood, like you know, like yeah. table wood. That's how that's how like <laughs> stringy and wired this little this little chimpanzee was, this little baby. And then this little baby chimpanzee got excited and ha- overly happy." And started like just like slapping him on his back, okay. And this big dude is thinking, "Oh my God, this thing is beating me down. Like, what the heck? It just happened to me." So yeah, I think like like animal strong is on a completely it's, different level. It's totally different ball game. Yeah, because you you know you know some people out there. It's like you know it's like I would totally wrestle a bear. I'm like, no, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> that thing would grab you by your by your foot and throw you to the moon. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a newbie. It would be nice to see if you could specify recommended for beginners, novice, or advanced. Okay, well, I can make it even simpler for you. Most corals are actually okay for beginners. Yeah. There's, not a, yeah. there's not a huge difference in, in challenge going from like the easiest coral to 90% close to the most difficult coral. That is not that difficult. But once you get into that last 10%, it goes from pretty darn challenging to next to impossible. But most things you should be able to keep alive. So the things that I would say to avoid for right now are certain SPS like Acropora. Hmm. That might be it. Yeah, so that's pretty that much it. it. Like, like sometimes people might say like Montipora in there, but mm-hmm. most Montes will do okay too. Yeah. Um, you want to avoid anything non-photosynthetic. You don't want any part of that action. Like that is <laughs> that is the wrong. That's a whole new. That's another topic. That is a whole different ball game. Yeah. Total different ball. That's game. like so. Going with our cat analogy, that's like how hard is it to keep the cat versus how hard is it to keep a tiger? <laughs> it is a. It, they're completely different. Completely like, different. Yeah. And, and I know somebody's in, in, in there thinking, oh, but I can keep non Look, for yeah. every person that can keep non photosynthetics, I there's, bet there's 10,000 people that's that can't. That's what I was going to say, like 1,000 plus that can't. Yeah. 10, most 000. people can't do it. Not even most. Like The majority. In, like an insignificant number of people can keep it. D- just look for how many. Can you, can you Google like how many non photo tanks even exist? Yeah, that, that's a that's a great that's a great example. <laughs> yeah, find me great non photosynthetic tanks, and compare that with great, great SPS tanks, tanks right. which, by the way, are are rare. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. So there you go. Whether are. people believe that part or not, but they really are. Great SPS reef tanks are very rare. Mountain lions are pretty terrifying. It's a good thing that they're scared, mostly scared of us. Their scream is just horrifying. I've heard that like there are certain animals that um, their their calls are bone chilling. Like it's almost like it's 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 in our DNA now to be terrified of that. Mm-hmm. So somebody was saying how like um, they were camping in like Utah, and they heard wolves, and like hearing them like you know call to each other, mm-hmm. howl at each other over the over like the valley. They were like, I'm absolutely bone chillingly terrified. terrified. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like that that Petrified, that howl terrified. is just affecting every molecule of my body. So um, then change the subject, just real quick off topic. Um, 
Did you say we didn't have any snow? <laughs> Some what? Snow. Oh yeah, like outside. It's, it's like white. dumping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cold outside. Yep. We were supposed to go to dinner. Still might. Yeah. Well, we we did know that it was coming, right? Yeah. We were told. We only got two and a half hours. Yeah. Mom's made sure. She said. She told us. Uh, we'll I have two right. English mastiffs. My female is over two hundred pounds. Oh. Yeah, big dogs. Unfortunately, my wife has one too. Really? Is that what you have? Yeah, we have a little Maltese. Oh. You didn't know she had a big. Was it an English Mastiff? Yeah, we have one. Oh, okay. He's seven months old and already yeah. stands. Yeah, I, I, know, yeah. I know that dog. Yeah, it's an English Mastiff. It's actually the papers. His great grandfather came from the movie Sandlot, so he's oh, okay. that bloodline. Hmm. You remember that movie Sandlot? Nope, I never saw it. That's never a classic, it. Sandlot. I've heard oh of it. man, you got to watch it. I have a love-hate relationship with my son, Coral. So check this out too, please. Yeah, I've seen that. So, speaking of uh, non-photo tanks, I did see one tank that was really interesting. And they had, um, you know how you have like like magnet cleaners mm -hmm. or like a, um, what is it, like a, like a Tunzi magnet for your, yeah. for the power heads? Well, I saw this tank that has like, ridiculously healthy looking um, sun corals. And what they had did was they glued the sun coral onto one of those magnets, and then they put the magnet kind of, I don't know, about five inches underneath a, a power head on the, mm. on, the, on the glass. And like the flow of water coming to that power head brought nutrient to the coral. And so as soon as I saw that tank, I said, Ben, get over here. Look at this. And within like five minutes, our sun corals were yeah, glued so, and, yeah. and right underneath one of these power heads that circulates water around it. And sure enough, it looks a lot better. That, that is, that's crazy. But it's yeah. awesome that, you know, um, you was able to pick up on that and seeing, you know, it was like, that is key. That's, that's something. Key. Yeah. Like whatever that guy's doing, I, I need to try that. Uh, chillaxing 24-7. Don't you have to feed non-photosynthetic... <laughs> it is one of those days. Non You're okay today. photosynthetic coral <laughs> multiple times a day. Yes. Yes. Um, but if you're feeding your fish lot. multiple times a day and yeah. you have this power head and uh, contraption thing set up, uh, yeah. you probably don't have to direct feed. It's going to bring all the nutrients from fish poo Past and it. all kinds of yeah, stuff constantly. right to it constantly. I like that. Now that you said that, it's like, wow. I've always thought non-photosynthetic is easier if the system dedicated to keeping them. So, mm. so here's the thing. <sighs> I don't know if there's a, such a thing as a non-photosynthetic system dedicated to keeping them. Because I've tried to build such systems, like with constant, you know, 24-7 feeders and everything like that. It's never worked. Like, it's never worked for me. I don't think you could do a dedicated. I think non-photosynthetic corals would have to be kept with, I personally think, for good success, would be a mature tank that uh -huh. has a lot of nutrients, not in a sense of, um, nutrients that it's constantly being fed, even though you have SPS, a, a, a mixed reef. Mm -hmm. I think it will do very well in a, in a setting like that with a lot of fish, mm -hmm. a lot of rock, a lot of things constantly being moved, nutrients being, you know, not in a sense, traditional sense of high, high nutrients, but just a system that has nutrients 24-7 that is being yeah. circulating in there. Yeah, definitely. Not a brand new tank. I wouldn't set a brand new tank up and think no. that I would have. Oh, no, no. You know, um, I'm going to set this up for non-photosynthetic corals. I, I wouldn't do that. Well, I think what, what he was saying is, is to do stuff like having, you know, constant feeders or having like reactors no, I don't constantly think, generating no, food. I don't, I, no, I think it's a seasoned tank. It's, there's a big difference with seasoned tanks and and any person that has a new system mm -hmm. as long as they have this system every year you're going to see you can see how your system just becomes 
like, I don't know, it's weird, like really mature, it's like, and just do things where you really just leave it alone and it just starts to really thrive. The longer mm. it's up and stuff like that and you're doing your little maintenance, but it, it, it's weird. I mean, yeah, and you know, you're gonna get different opinions on that because I think some yeah. people say like really mature tanks mm -hmm. get like old tank syndrome, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, there's like a, there's a lot of like uh, competing theories about that sort of thing. No facts, but competing <laughs> competing theories. Yeah. No, no actual data. No data. There's no data. If there is, please leave it in the chat. Yeah, because again, it goes back to the whole. Uh, Nobody's funding this research. <laughs> right. Marine Hobby, it's 2.30 a.m. here, time for bed. Bye, see you later. Wow. Have a good night. 12 hours. I think he, he's in India, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Birdie under the branches. Nudie Bronx is also safe for Monty. I had a Monty completely wipe out due to the nudie, or is that a different kind? Uh... Well, you know what Burgias look like? They look like Montepore eating nudie bronze. Yeah, they're, if you ever see them, they're, you know. Yeah. I wonder if you just you had gotta, Montepore that's eating what, nudie bronze. That's what, I'm, that's yeah. what I was wondering. Somebody, I mean, not, not even to like laugh about it, but right. like if you do a search for what a Montepore eating nudie bronze looks like and look at what a Burgia looks like, Mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty similar. And if you just have like a whole bunch of like little white nudie bronx eating, you, eating your Montes, I don't think that was in, that was, I don't think that was a Bergia. I'm just, that, that, once again, I, you know, maybe somebody got shafted and, you know, it goes back to the peppermint shrimp versus camel shrimp. Uh. <laughs> and I guess there's like, a, there's different types of uh, Bergia. Well, no, I was thinking about the shrimp. Oh, the, they're mm. actually like Lysimata. There's, they're, they're the right genus even, mm. but they're just kind of different. And they, uh, oh. and they just eat coral. Uh, see, uh, if, yeah. I, I never heard of that, and I might have just learned something new here. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot of little variants. Wow. Because on a, on a camel and a peppermint, you have to really look at the stripe pattern, right? Uh, they're, 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 uh, they're, they have a weird back, back hump, too. And, and they do got that point. Yeah. Right? That point that makes them a camel. Yeah. So. The wife is calling. Be right back. Yeah. Blue Basin says, my system has been running nonstop for 12 years. Yeah, and actually, now that I think of it, ours has... Two. Um, we started our systems back up in 2007. So yeah, we've been 12 years running nonstop as well. So far, so good. Can't complain too much. I mean, we run into our our issues. Every every system does over that type of that period of time. But um, yeah, can't can't complain too much, right? Yeah, the, the camel shrimp are weird looking, but yeah, it's there. There's very few um, predators when it comes to Montipore, and I'm like, I see that we're actually covering some Monty, so it's good, good topic, I guess. The only thing that I've ever really seen would have been those nudie bronx. I mean, that's I've I've never it, like zoanthids, for example, have tons of different types of pests, but Montes not so much. Not so much. So I wouldn't expect it to be anything other than those little white nudie bronx. I'm trying to think, like the, the, a bigger worry that I would have with like, with Montipora is something going wrong chemically, more so than um, anything with with a pest, because in the past, whenever I had like a Montipora eating nudie bronx issue. Uh, it was almost impossible to get on top of because like you can dip them like crazy. Uh, sometimes they would fall off and die, but their eggs would be unaffected. And just over time, even if you were to dip that same coral 50 times, eventually the coral will die the mo and the nudie bronx will just have taken over. But if you just add a couple of, of good pest control wrasses, that nudie bronx issue just goes away. So 
You know, I think a, a lot of times, um, you know, I think I think people have uh, this impression that they can, if they, as long as they can keep the pests out of their aquarium, they'll be good, and and that's a good strategy. But I think an even um, a more effective strategy is to always have some some uh, like predator pressure on those pests. So, uh, like that, that, that's why like I can't be bothered about um, aptasia. Like occasionally we we have like a, a little thing of aptasia here and there. It's like the biggest non-issue. You take that little thing, put it with it with a copper band, put it with a peppermint shrimp. It's gone in 24 hours. Move on with your life. But if you were, I, I, I don't know, I think in people that are more new to the hobby kind of get worried more about stuff like Aptasia. Like in the grand scheme of things, a pest like Aptasia is like the most nothing, basic, easy to handle thing. It's just when you start to multiply the number of aquariums by like 50, and occasionally you'll have a couple tanks without a copper band in it, that's when you start to see them. But yeah, but for things like the the, the Montipore eating nudibranch issue, which was again used to be horrible for me, it was it was solved by rasses just entirely. So so every now and again, like um, you know, we we place an order for new stuff. Who knows what kind of comes in on on, on new corals? Again, it couldn't. It, it might not even necessarily be a Montipora. Because a lot of these pests, they spread off of their host coral onto something else. Not that they're eating anything else, but they travel, they go looking, and they end up, you just you end up bringing something in completely unrelated to Montipora, but now you have Montipora eating nudibranchs, eating your Montes. If you've got a couple rasses, not a big deal. Roughly how many gobies could you keep in a 500 gallon tank? I'm guessing a whole bunch, a whole bunch. Blue Basin says, if I see them, the Monty's going into the trash. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I mean, I, but you know what? I, I've, I, I, would, I would pull them out and just separate all the Monty's and keep no Monty's in the system for a while because there's some really cool Monty's like to just Throw them away. So I've said that before too. I, I I've said that it's. I think in in my pest video I said, it's probably not the worst idea in the world just to discard the, the coral. But you know that that's that's an older video. Yeah. And like looking at what I know now. <laughs> yeah. Would you say that now? No. I, I would say, just get the pest control that you need, and that problem will go away. Like. If you had a rock full of Aptasia now, how worried would you be? I wouldn't worry about it at all. Exactly. See, guys, so while, while you were gone, we were just talking about how, like, there are, there are pest situations that are so easy to take care of if you know what you're doing that it's, like, it's the biggest non-factor. No, there's a lot of pests that you can have in your system, and they can all be dealt with, honestly. And I think yeah. a lot of the things that, these kind of things come up are from very new hobbyists. And, mm -hmm. and, we, and we talked about that a little bit in the kitchen too, like how over time, if you stay in the hobby, you, you will see people will make comments like on this topic, mm -hmm. well, I've been doing it for 15 years, I've been doing it for 10, I've been doing it for 20, and I don't worry about stuff like that. I think the longer you're in the hobby, mm -hmm. you really your outlook changes night and day. But I think also, um, just because of how much information is available, mm. I think that people overreact sometimes. That too. Because they, they, they've, you know what, to their credit, they've done research. Mm -hmm. And they see that this is a pest. This is a pest you want to avoid, and here are some problems. And some people, even like my video, like I said, this pest is so bad that I, I'm considering just throwing away the coral rather than trying to dip it. And that was definitely true when I made that video. Mm -hmm. And even now, again, always learning and stuff, but somebody is gonna come across that pest video that has like 150,000 views or so, whatever it is. And then I'm gonna catch all the wrath because I do things different. Or, or no, no, <laughs> no. But it's now people are, you know, they're, 
that's their baseline because they haven't personally experienced the problem. Right. And it's like, well, and somebody supposedly credible, you know, had said this. And so I think like, and you're gonna see that same thing for Aptasia, you're gonna see it for like all kinds of other things. Like, um, bristle worms get such a oh bad rap. Oh my God, they do. Yeah, and it's like, guys, <laughs> it's bristle not, worms aren't it, even a problem. No, they're part of your cleanup crew and they regulate themselves. And um, like my parents sometimes don't like bristle worms. Like my full-time guy, Ben, doesn't like bristle worms. And it's, it's like, God, yeah. th this is the most nothing, nothing thing. Nothing. Yeah. Sorry, I'm like reading here. Pizza coral. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what he was looking at. Yeah. Oh, we didn't mention the barbecue at all. No, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, yeah. yeah, so two please. please. Yeah, thanks yeah. for that. So yeah, the barbecue is going on on July, July 27th. 27th. And uh, tickets are still available for that. Um, we're hoping to uh, to get some some YouTubers that you might recognize to come as well, so you can meet the entire YouTube family. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a good time. It's it's still very early yet, but it's always good to to kind of you know Plan pencil ahead. in a date. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good one because I've been getting a lot of it. I don't know if you get a lot of about the ver uh, ver minute snails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, what do you normally tell people to do with those? Remove them by hand, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, so a, a lot of times in smaller aquariums you can do that, but they're really difficult to work with since they poke into you and you get infected and stuff like that. It's no fun. But if you stay on top of it, you can remove it over time. Mm -hmm. I think what people tend to do is they don't do anything until and it's an yeah. insurmountable problem but even if you do get to an insurmountable problem state you can just take pieces of rock that don't have corals glued to them or anything like that mm -hmm. and, and essentially try to sterilize that piece of rock then bring it back in it's kind of like the you know the, the mass destruction method but it could work South Detroit to Akron, very doable. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like We got three people hours. flying from Texas, from Florida, from all over. I think even our good friend, um, Brian uh, Zoanthus, um from Utah. Oh, Brandon. Brandon, yeah. yeah Zoanthus.com. Yeah. Even he's... Did he confirm? He's, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure because he told me, oh, I will be there. Okay. So... Even he will, he's going to be here. So people are flying in. They did last time too, for the very first one. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good time. So, uh, I have heard that those bumblebee snails eat vermetids, but I've never seen it. I haven't seen it, but I also, I've only had one bumblebee and it came in as a hitchhiker, uh -huh. but I didn't have vermetid snails neither. So, I, I can't tell you for a fact. Yeah. But you know what? Since that person made a, you know, claim, you know, maybe for the person that has it, maybe find a uh, couple of those, you know, get like a dozen of them and put them in there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Or better yet, shoot video of it so other people yeah, can see. That's a great idea. Yeah. You know, because the proof is always in the pudding. So it definitely would be a great help because a lot of people, for some reason, has been. Uh, combating this problem like it's more more of a problem frequently for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking of remitteds, there's one between 171 and 172. Yep, like this guy right there. Oh, yeah. Yep. You can see those little uh, mucus webs. webs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here's the thing. Uh, we have, we have 5,000 gallons of systems right now. I don't make any special effort to get rid of them, and I don't have a problem with them either. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Maybe something that I have is controlling that population. Because I've had other tanks where it's just like, this is nuts. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? 
I bet there is something eating them because uh, on most of our tanks, we have like a few but nothing crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But then uh, we have like this container that we put our skimmer in. in this is only in one of our skimmers. But we have an in sump skimmer. And we put it into this uh, kind of like a giant flower pot looking thing. So water flows into the flower pot and then overflows the sides to keep a stable level for the protein skimmer. Mm -hmm. On the inside of that pot, every single flat surface is vermeted snail. Wow. All of it. So like four cubic feet, or like <laughs> four square feet, <laughs> not cubic feet, four square feet, all vermeted snail. Yeah, I don't know if coral dip actually kills vermeted snails. Not very well, because yeah. they can seal themselves right up. Yeah. And Nate says that they do eat, that he put 20 bumblebees snails, uh, snails in there. So, um, but yeah, it would be cool if somebody can capture some video. Yeah. Trust it me, it would be very nice for the community to at least have a video of that. Happening. So Sean McKinney on Facebook said, no snow in Cleveland and in six. So it's a good day to watch the show. Oh. Hmm. Nice. Well, we're, we're, we're underneath the snow belt. So that's yeah. kind of funny. We, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of snow over here. Looks insane. Like it looks like it's no fun right outside right now. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. Like we've seen like way worse. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But it's... It's a fair amount, right? I had an oscillated butterfly fish that was murderous in its remitted string eating. Not sure if it's enough to harass them to death, but it's certainly satisfying to watch. Um, yeah, I, I don't really do much with butterflies. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Um, there's also like, not all remitteds are the same. Some of them stay tiny and others get absolutely huge too. What NFL teams are you going for? I'm not the biggest NFL fan, no, no, no. Um, but I have been kind of, um, kind of encouraged by the Browns finally getting like a franchise quarterback. And once you end up with a franchise quarterback, it's crazy to see how literally everything just got better. Well, so. The Cavs can do it. The Browns, it's 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 overdue. <laughs> Yeah, it just takes a generational talent every now and again. Mm -hmm. uh, what can I put in my five-gallon nano that will control hair algae and won't kill snails? Next question. Your hands. <laughs> Guess what you can do? I'm not even kidding, Reef Boy. That is the best thing you can do. Get your hands in there, get a toothbrush and a little siphon, and get to work. Because, yes. Yeah, for real. That's what you're doing. If just put it like this, for most hair algae, I don't care what size tank it is, the best thing you could do is get in there with your hands and manually remove it. You got to remember, the more you can remove everything that it's uptaking to grow, um, you're physically removing it. Now, I've had people say, what about a blackout, Rico? Well, here's the problem with a blackout. Where's all the nutrients that it just took up go? So when you re recover and actually turn the lights back on, what's going to happen? Um, manually remove it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and allow your tanks to do the work as well. And do some water changes. Lower your nutrients. And especially on a five-gallon water change, there's really... There's... Uh, there's in a five-gallon nano, there's nano. there's not a lot of excuse not to do like, water changes. Like, Because it's really easy. It's not a lot I would of have a, On a five-gallon, if I ever owned a five-gallon, it would it would be hooked up to a, the drip system like freshwater people do, yeah. where it's constant. <laughs> yeah. It'll, it'll just overflow <laughs> yeah. into a drain. It, exactly. Yeah. Literally. Lower the phosphates and it becomes easier to pull. Okay. I could see that. Mm hmm It won't be as um, rooted. Yeah. But but seriously, like if you, you could do like a one gallon water change every single day for like like uh, 
I mean, just think about that. Like a, a, a six months on a two hundred. A new box. batch of, of water <laughs> in a five gallon bucket. It's, or it's so easy, and that's like one gallon a day. So it's an entire week, Monday through Friday. Right. One gallon. Yeah, easy, easy peasy. You don't. Yeah. But that means you can't leave your house ever on five gallon nano tank. Like you can't go on a week vacation. No, you can just set up an auto doser system to do. Or you could take it on a plane with you. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I do believe that there is, there should be, how do you feel about that subject, about these little tanks? Like, do you, I mean, me personally, I feel like they shouldn't be done at all, period. I don't love them. I definitely don't love them. Um, I think it's cruel punishment, unusual. I mean, like, like philosophically, and because the instability, it's it's still an animal. Don't put no fish. When I'm not even talking about the fish, I'm talking about the corals that you're putting in such a small, really unstable conditions, twenty four seven. It's unstable unless maybe you're you're putting it on a constantly drip system and whatever. But other than that, yeah, I, my thing is is more like. I think a lot of the a lot of the draw to like the really small stuff mm-hmm. is more I, I guess like a querist ego driven than it is looking Definitely at, at ego driven at the health of the animal thing. Yeah, I mean, I, they're, they're, just I think, to say they can do it. Like if you, if you look at some really popular YouTube videos, mm-hmm. it'll be something like the smallest reef tank in the world, sort of thing. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like in like some thimble sized. Thing. It's, it's like a very popular, like, how small, and, and you remember, do you remember those things called aqua babies that they're selling in the mall? I've heard of it, but it's, I have It's basically like a one gallon, may, maybe not even one gallon, maybe like a half gallon thing that has like a guppy, a snail, and a little plant and a tiny light over it. And it's <laughs> like, this is an ecosystem. And they just have like some brainless college kid selling this. Yeah. It, it's like that sort of thing where it's like, oh, you can you can market some nonsense to people, and they'll just believe it. Or or it's like this completely sealed globes mm-hmm. with like a shrimp, a snail, and some freshwater plants. Yeah, and completely sealed. It's like this thing can last forever this way. Well, <sighs> they take that to the next level in China. Where sometimes you see like just jewelry, which is basically like a little plastic thing that you can look like wear around your neck, and has a turtle in it, <laughs> and they, they'll sell you one of those. And they're yeah. like, oh, it, it, it'll last forever, and by forever it means like a day or two, <laughs> and that's okay because that's just like the priority that they place on on stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna. You so like... I, I'm of course like go, that. Those are extreme examples, right? But yeah, I'm not about that entire line of thinking like i'm all about super long-term sustainable everything yeah and i'm i mean well you know like for the subject that we just talked about you know about this nano stuff it's not it's not a debate whether people can be successful with it or not i Mm -hmm. mean people are to a certain degree yeah um but, but for it's, how long? It's that certain degree part. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. so I don't know if Harkins is is still in chat or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, he was over here, and, and he, his thing is actually koei, mm-hmm. like the, the Japanese gold yeah. carp, right? Mm-hmm. Fancy carp. So here in in Northeast Ohio, sometimes people have these koei ponds, and I don't know where this prevailing sentiment about koei came from, but here it's average. They survive three years. Mm-hmm. And they say you know, you just need to like dig down thirty six inches, and then they'll you know that that's below the frost layer, and they, they'll they can winter down there. And if your koi lasts three years after doing that, um, it's it's fine. And like people have no idea that you know how you know how old koi can live to, like over a hundred and fifty I mean, years, two hundred plus or whatever. It's insane. Like yeah. th- this fish, this animal, should outlive your grandkids. And perhaps their kids as well, mm-hmm. but three years is somehow good enough. It's like no, you're doing something horribly wrong. If something's <laughs> life expectancy is 150 years, and then and you're getting three, you're getting three. That's some seriously Cause, wrong. Yeah, because you wanted you wanted a pond, you know. 
So that's kind of my, that's my rant. Why is Reef 77? What's up, Dan and Rico? How do I purchase these corals? So right now I'm looking at uh, item number 187, okay? And right there, want to buy coral? Head over to TidalGardens.com and you should be able to see the live sale link there. Or you can go to TidalGardens.com slash live and that will take you directly to that page. And so if you wanted item number 187, uh, all the numbers are just listed right down below. You can just put into shopping cart and check out like it's a regular item. And some other folks threw the, threw the links in there for you. So thank you very much. Calcanort. Calc. A nort. A nort. And in um, Reef Boy, um, talking about, I could only afford a five gallon. Um, the best time to pick up gear is heading into summertime. A lot of people bounce out of the hobby. Mm -hmm. And so you, you'd be surprised at what, what people are willing to let go for a song when it comes to like the summertime effect on this hobby. Uh, any developments uh, on your plan to do bacterial feeding that you mentioned in your Will's Tank Spotlight? No, not yet. I, I think that I would have to set that up completely separately in a, in a smaller aquarium. I must have missed that. Um, I, I, I have some room set aside in this new building once we start to get that going for some um, like species-specific tanks, some experimental tanks, things like that. And I think that once I start messing around there, is when I'll, I'll play around more with the idea of like uh, some, some bacterial stuff as well. But I'm not going to be doing it on a, on a big system with like a thousand corals in it. Like those days are kind of over. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get experimental on the small scale. Uh, Fish Guy NY, do you like Acropower? Acropower? Acropower. Um, I used it one time. My thing is Aquavitra Fuel. Um, I didn't see much of a difference when I used it, but I don't. I didn't use it long enough to even give a actual any kind of advice. I guess you know, as far as what I really liked, what I've noticed, did I see any kind of notices? So I don't know how to. So <laughs> let's see. Um... Well, for, for the folks that, that aren't exactly following along, what is Acropower? Amino acids. Right, okay. So, um, so he, he likes to use aqua vitro fuel. Uh, I think a lot of these brands are roughly the same thing, though. I, I had like some Acropower. I put it in the tanks. Things seem to be doing okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I didn't do it long enough to... Yeah, it, it's, a lot of times, you know, so, something might have a positive effect. And it just makes no like visible difference, mm -hmm. and, uh, and unfortunately, sometimes um, the only time I really notice when I try something is when something goes terribly wrong. Well, that's that's exactly what you're gonna get. Anything yeah. that's good is not gonna show immediate effects. Bad things happen very All fast. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Sean McKinney, guys, what's for dinner? It looks like Korean. Korean. Is the thing. Yeah. Should I get Indian or Lebanese? Um, hmm. So he doesn't like Indian. Yeah. But Lebanese. I like both. And I, I specifically like shish kebab salads if you're going to do Le Lebanese. Uh, Nelson Melendez, where are the zoos? Um, I think you may have missed, missed them. Few, yeah. But they are scattered about. Actually, we're at 192, so you definitely have missed them. And why can't I see people's messages? Most of the activity, Nelson, is happening on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, does Acropower work for Zoas? Possibly, don't really know. Amino acids is things that are going to any, I mean, you're putting it in the water. I mean, regardless, we don't know, we can't tell you what effects, I mean, I, I think the only way to tell you what anything works is by doing tissue samples and, 
you know, stuff like that. You have to dissect things and, you know, do a tank that's not getting it versus a tank that's getting it over a course of, I don't know, year, 18 months, you know, and then do tissue samples on both animals and stuff like that to yeah, see if tough. there's, you know, some differences in what they're getting. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that you guys want answers to, to be honest, uh, and Dan could agree or disagree, there's no answers to it. There's Not no yet, scientific anyways. answers to things that has been around for 40 plus years when it comes to this hobby. There's just no answers to it. So can you sometimes see, like I see a difference using Acrovitra fuel with my corals. Um, a positive because I continue to use it. If I seen a negative, then obviously I wouldn't use it. Um, now, to what extent? How good is it working? I can't answer those questions. Yeah. <laughs> See, the thing is, like, I, I, like theoretically, um, good feeding is really a positive thing. Yeah. Um, however, um, I think that there are other things that are also just like normal, but have a way more profound effect. So, like. Lighting and filtration <laughs> are going to make a much bigger difference on the appearance of your corals than anything else. Well, no, and it's still the feeding because the filtration, good filtration, it, it, high import, high export. Yeah. You, you know, it's just like us, our human body, we technically should be eating, you know, how many times throughout the day? Multiple times throughout the day. Why? Because it keeps us regulated. It keeps us um, sure. in good shape, good health, versus only eating one big McDonald's meal a day. Right. But analogies aside, though, yeah. like if you go from not so good lighting to great lighting, that coral looks a billion times like, like that, that impact. So I'll, I'll use the football analogy now that we're talking analogies aside, okay? Mm -hmm. You could have the best left tackle to ever play the game. Mm -hmm. And your team might still be garbage. If you have the best quarterback Back. to ever play the game, that will have a much more profound effect. Correct. So left tackles, premium position, but, less impactful than something else. But if you have a multiple two of things, you could probably win the championship. Yeah. So to, to be, you have you have to do it all. <laughs> That's but what sometimes we're I think I think people focus sometimes on like the real the real nitty gritty like bleeding edge type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think and not to like you know to to toot our own horns or anything like that. Yeah. But um, it, we we sometimes like the the more experienced hobbyist oftentimes focus on kind of that, that, that edge of the unknown when it comes to coral nutrition and stuff like that. I'm talking about that in my last video with bacterial feeding. Somebody's asking about that with amino acids and whatnot. It's because we've done all the other stuff leading mm -hmm. up to it, right? Exactly. It's like we've already have experimented with the cost no object lighting. We've experimented with you know, all, these, all this other manner of filtration and all that stuff is already handled. We've, we've set, yeah, we set the, the goal, baseline. The baseline or whatever. And we're doing. now we're doing all the, all the, the tweaks. We're, now we're talking about aquaphorus. Now we're talking about these other things. So again, I, I, you know, it's, it's sometimes good to take a step back as well. And you know, not everybody is running like Gen 4 Radeon Pros. Not everybody is running ATI 8 bulb T5 fluorescent fixtures. Right. Um, not everybody is running giant calcium reactors and doing continuous water changes and, and all that stuff. And that stuff, that will dramatically uh, impact the look of your corals. Mm -hmm. It's everything else after that, it's like, it's like polish, you know. It's yeah, just that you're last just, little mm -hmm. bit of refinement that you're looking for. So in your last video, you talked about bacteria. Mm -hmm. What, using... So um, there was actually a study on this one. And they, they were looking at some, some SPS, mm -hmm. and they were studying the, the water that was between the branches mm -hmm. versus the water outside the branches. Mm. And what they found is that the water in the branches mm -hmm. um, had lower nitrates and phosphates than water just out here. Okay, mm -hmm. But 
it also had higher levels of bacteria. And so what, uh, what they were theorizing was that the bacteria, right, does mm -hmm. that ultra-low nutrient type stuff, is consuming nitrates and phosphate. That's that's in the branches. That's in the okay. branches, okay. And so, and, and there, there's a higher bacteria count that's going on in the branches. Okay. And so they were, they were thinking, because, because we know, we've known for a long time that corals, stony corals and stuff, mm -hmm. eat bacteria. Correct. Okay. But not only do they eat bacteria, but they might be eating s other things that eat bacteria. So like zooplankton that comes mm -hmm. and eats bacteria, that then, then the coral then eats, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that nitrate and phosphate and the bacteria itself is making its way into the coral. And so the coral is actually growing in a, in a shape to maximize light exposure, flow exposure, and the ability to culture coral inside its branches. So, so what kind of bacteria though? That's the thing. Like yeah, that, what, I don't what, know. You know how we're getting? It, well, they making their own bacteria. They're, yeah, they're they're basically they, farming bacteria. They're, they're farming their own bacteria. Yeah, and so they are automatically growing. Because I've been on this whole bacteria um, kick too about um, you know the beneficial bacteria that you're utilizing live bacteria <laughs> for cycling an aquarium. What is that? Uh, so somebody was saying, uh, can you please go back to, to number one? <laughs> so, okay, we actually did, st we, we did start back over onto 100 because we did loop back around here. Um, how important is it to, t you know what, I, I may as well go back to one. Okay, so I'll, I'll do that favor for you, Gabe's Reef. I will probably run this back tomorrow anyway. So if you guys wanted to, to come back and hang out again, that is cool. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> um, how important is it to test magnesium and alkalinity? If you have stony corals, it's, uh, it's, good, it's really it's alkalinity. It's de it's definitely good to do, but alkalinity it tells all at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, so for me, unless I, for some reason, really need um, or just curious of what the other levels are, um, actual want to see numbers. Other than that, I don't worry about the other ones. Alkalinity is going to tell you everything. If your alkalinity is whack, you can bet your bottom dollar everything else is whack. How do you feel about it? I think a, like a, if you kind of look at it like spokes on a wheel, a lot of times people do look at alkalinity as like the as the hub. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, our alkalinity sucks. And, I know yours do. And <laughs> It's, but the thing, it seems to be okay. But no, it's okay because, so what he's truly saying is, he, his alkalinity is below what the standard is sometimes. But here's the thing. It's done over a period of time too. So yeah. now what's, where, where it's at now is the norm. See, corals can adjust, which people don't, I don't think truly understand. They think because we have this window of seven or 11 when it comes to alkalinity, well, that's where it needs to be or something bad can happen. Well, I'm sorry, I've been way over 12 on alkalinity before. And it's been done over a slower period. Is it healthy for the corals? I don't know. Um, did I lose corals? No, I didn't. But I knew better to go ahead and bring it back down rapidly into those things because when I have done that, I have had bad results from shocking the corals. Um, so over time, the corals can adapt to higher or lower uh, parameters that are ideal, should I say, um, for the reef aquarium. His, such a large facility and stuff like that, he doesn't worry about because he doesn't have to. They're not showing signs of stress. They're not showing signs of RTNN, STNN, and it's been done slowly. When he goes to go ahead and fill up his calcium reactors and get everything back online, that's gonna take time and it's gonna come up. When he does a water change, it's gonna bump it up a little bit. Those things are gonna slowly go back up and then it'll be where he needs, wants them to be or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. Yeah, there's definitely that, um, like whatever you're gonna do, you wanna do it slowly. Cause my alkalinity was like two point something or three point something. <laughs> And don't tell it's not okay to be there. Do not yeah. be there. Don't do and that. And <laughs> if we wanted to, to then get it back up to eight, doing so quickly would be a really bad idea. There'd be no more tidal gardens. At least not in that tank. 
<laughs> uh, okay, can you expand on the difference between adding ALK and buffers? Those two are kind of synonymous, <laughs> kind of synonymous. They, those two things, in, in actual chemistry terms, are very different. In this hobby, they're basically the same, same. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So like we have made it like when you when you hit like high school chemistry, like your high school chemistry teacher will bonk you on the head if you say that alkalinity and buffers are all the same <laughs> because they're really not. Like in the, for reefing terms, say for reefing alkaline. terms, like the products that you're buying, <laughs> yeah, it's still the same baking soda that is in both of them. Mm -hmm. It is what it, what is baking soda? Calcium hydroxide. Hydride. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody was asking, uh, does it kick you off a certain coral if somebody's already bought it? Yeah, so if the, if the coral is already unavailable, so like if we're looking at what item number six, if six isn't there, that means somebody bought it. Okay guys, I think uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, if you wanna come and hang out with us, or with me tomorrow, yeah, uh, I will go ahead and uh, fire this thing right back up at two. Um, I'm going to check on this notification thing. I wonder if like there's some weird setting that's No, like, it's happened to me several different times. Really? Literally with no change in settings Lovely. or anything. So, so I'll, uh, I'll bounce back uh, tomorrow and uh, we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend if I don't see you tomorrow. And this live show does continue on for a few days into next week. So 